USB advanced audio device. There we go. Okay, look, that works. So now I'll just set I'll say here to come on. And there, okay, say something. Okay, I'm good. Fine. Okay, you're good. Right. All right, we're, we're fine okay, now. Yeah. We're fine now. Yeah, okay. Yay. Yay. Hello, Hi, everyone. everyone. Who's here so far. <laughs> um, we are here for our annual Bloodborne stream. Hey, Centrina. For the Arnhem. We are streaming, as you know, to help out Mef, who runs the Bloodborne Wiki. We have a little uh, fundraiser every year, and we greatly enjoyed uh, preparing this time. We are going to do a very simple run um, from In New Game Plus, but we've been looking forward to it, and. I've been listening to a lot of backlog on Stin podcasts <laughs> to prepare for this. Because I gotta say, as much as I love Bloodborne lore, and I really do, it's easy to forget about. It's so complex that some parts are difficult for me to to retain. So I found it really helpful and really nice to be able to do that. And uh, I also, I just got the Bloodborne itch back uh, this month, like a month ago. So I was able to also do a full playthrough myself. And um, I, the build that I'm helping Sophie with today is my latest character and She's the last in a series of 70 bit 50 main stat characters that I built. And she is skill, 70 bit 50 skill, which is, of course, crazy overpowered if you're going solo and you can parry. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. Yeah. Are we ready? Um, yeah, I'm ready. For... Yeah. Do you want to just introduce yourself in case people don't know who you are? Oh, sure. My apologies. <laughs> <That's okay>. Um <laughs> I'm Altair. That's my online username. Um I've been a Bloodborne fan for what's about to be the eighth year now. Uh, sorry, the seventh, because I started playing Bloodborne about a year after it came out. Um, I have been a Tomb Prospector, among other things, and I'm kind of like, I'm mostly a player myself. I'm not a content creator, but I happen to know quite a few people uh, just in the content creator landscape. Um, and my main contributions to the game have been related to the Chalice Dungeons. So uh, that's most, where most of my work has been. Um, and I really love Bloodborne. It's my favorite game of all time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started a few years ago, Sophie and I started uh, doing the stream. Uh, for MEF, and uh, it's become a tradition that we do every return to Yarnum. Yeah, yeah. So that's who I am. Yeah. <clears throat> Just to follow up on what Altia said there, like, MEF is the person who runs and writes a lot of bloodborne-wiki.com, and um, that is a site that she's very, very... She's very, very uh, conscientious about that not being ad-supported. So... It's a website that, like, she is paying for the hosting out of pocket. And basically what we do is, like, we're just, we raise money to help the site keep going, essentially. Yes. Yeah. And uh, she does all the work herself. She, yeah, she coded she, the website. She wrote the whole website HTML. by herself from HTML. Um, like, just from a laptop she was taking around cafes. She just wrote it in Notepad. Yes. And also I must say about the wiki that it has 
such a huge wealth of information about Bloodborne. It's just, it has so much of the community work went into it, the findings about the Chalice Dungeons, and there's info about data mined content and unpatched content, and Sophie did a lot of the work, and so did a lot of other contributors in various communities. And she documents all that's been done, so it's the most in-depth site that exists about this game. It's uh, probably the most uh, complete collection of information about Bloodborne that exists, I would say. So we are big admirers and contributors, and we love to do this every year. Yeah. Okay, so um, I've sent you the password on Discord. Okay. So if you send that to you, you but I'm at Gilbert's Lantern. Okay. Sure. Um. I'll put it in. And central Yarnum, here we go. Okay. And yeah, just for anyone who's shown up, what's happened is um, I'm already through New Game. This is the start of New Game Plus, obviously, because I've got like equipment, I've got the church pick and everything. And um, Altai is like at New Game Plus level. I think you'll, you'll level 120. We're both 120. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're both 120, so we're just going to play through New Game Plus together for like a couple of hours, see how far we can get. That's right. Yeah. And, um, well, I'm, you all know, I'm sure, who Sophie is. Um, and uh, we, you must know that she's the queen of Bloodborne uh, <laughs> lore. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry. I I am a bit. I still need to focus. So I I apologize for the many times that I'm interrupting what I'm saying. Um, but um, I was thinking of chatting about Bloodborne lore yeah, pretty no much no while problem. we while we play. Um, and uh, the first thing that I wanted to talk to you about that I mentioned is. I am very curious about the fact that the bloodletting beast has its head in lower and it doesn't in Hyle, yeah. which is supposed to be further back in time. Yeah. Um, and I was wondering, like, uh, this is a possible explanation that I thought of. Could it be that Lawrence somehow like doesn't follow that rule no i think because... i think it is because he came in from outside he's like uh, us he's like going to the bottom like we are that's right yeah yeah he, it doesn't follow that rule yeah, because yeah. it comes from the outside and so the deeper you go the further in the future it is yeah yeah but the chalice is still you know a collection of events uh, I have a rung, by the way, I'm here. Okay. Um, it's a collection of events in the past, so you can still see him, but it goes in the reverse order than anything, than everything else um, of the Thumerian things. Ah, Bloodborne netcode never changes. There yeah, we, here go. we go. Return to Yarn, I'm supposed to be like, um, you start a new character and go through fresh, but like, I did that all yesterday. This, this character was started <laughs> yesterday, and I went through the whole game in the DLC. Oh my god. <laughs> to make sure I'd be on I'm, the right level. I'm sorry, Sophie. That's okay. Like, it, it was supposed to be the opposite. Like, this is my new character. <laughs> but I love your new character. Thank you, thank you. 
and yeah i mean we're still playing through the game from the beginning it yeah, yeah. still counts <laughs> Okay, someone in chat, um, Acherontis in chat wants to know Sorry. if there was one thing you could change about Bloodborne or Yarnum, what would it be? For me, it would be I would want the Chalice Dungeons to have had more time to be completed. Yeah, yeah. Because they're very obviously unfinished. Yeah. And it's a crying shame because they end up ended up being kind of an underwhelming experience mm. um and especially like t if if i couldn't give them more time to complete them and they had to stay that way my answer would be the gem system yeah it is a mess <laughs> it is a real mess as it is and uh, there were there are so many little quality of life fixes that could make it better yeah um what about you sophie uh i've never seen behavior in the war room before it just said resting at lanterns like being able to use them like oh, bonfires yeah. to just reset the area absolutely yeah yeah i agree the demon soul yeah. style um hub is a bit is a bit of a lot because Demon Souls Actually, let's, let's, let's has just such fewer. Do we want to bring Gus Coin? Oh sure, why okay. not? Okay, he's, yeah. he's, he's like part of the party. Yeah. With us. Oh no no, Pastor <laughs> Roberts, this isn't Meph. This is Altaya. Yeah, I'm not Meph. Sorry. Meph um, Meph knows I... we're streaming. She might show up in chat later. Yeah, although the. Hi, Gascoin. Uh, although um, I think it is now 1 a.m. in UTC. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. She probably won't be yeah, here, yeah. but I used to live in Europe, so we did these streams at a completely different time. Yeah. But now I live in the U.S., so I'm in a radically different time zone. I'm using the church pick just because I've never used the church pick before. I gotta tell you, this is a fun thing. Um, so I introduced myself, but something I didn't tell you about is that I really like playing FromSoft games at low level. Yeah. And I have done a complete blood level four run on my own, both in New Game and New Game Plus. So I finished New Game Plus, and I have a series of YouTube of me fighting all FRC bosses in the chalices with one health point Yes. to make sure that I didn't take hits. So I've done pretty crazy stuff with the game. Yeah. Um, and one of the characters that I had in the past, but I wasn't getting it much use for. So another thing that I love to do is to make cosplays of NPCs. Uh, it's really funny. And I once made a cosplay of Defector Antel, the guy who helps you with Dark Beast Parle. Yeah. Um, and he was a level 24 build that used the church pick. And I think, like, it was one of my most memorable moments. I, I went all the way to Sumeru Hyle and completely crushed the, the headless blood lelling beast <laughs> just with a church pick because it's that overpowered. It is amazing. It is a great, great weapon with a great moveset, and I'm so glad I tried it because i never given it a chance before that, but it was so worth it. So hilarious. See, I don't know anything about movesets, so I'm just doing chat shot twos over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> it works. Yeah, the reason Bloodborne is my favorite game is, like, everything about it, but... I think that what stood out to me the most as being 
really unique and impressive was the um the gameplay just it is so well made yeah and it feels great to play whatever weapon you use and it's a rare quality yeah so um i i have a cursed gem that lowers my um your ability Mm -hmm. So I am going to have to go so back to the gotta... dream periodically to actually repair, which you usually don't have to do. Sure, there's yeah, no yeah. haste. Yeah, so I'm just running back to Gilbert's lamp through the shortcut in the dark house. And then we'll head to guess. Okay. i starving starving again. Yeah. If anyone has other curiosities and questions to leave in the chat we'd love to answer not just about bloodborne lore but just about anything. <laughs> everything in general yeah we only get to do this like um, once a year it is yeah <laughs> although i gotta warn you that to, to the chat that i haven't touched elden ring since our stream last year yeah and for some reason i just can't get into it i don't know why and I like I think a big part of it is the amount of asset recycling that there is. And right. you know, if you've been a hardcore from soft player up to then, then you start recognizing a lot of cloning and it, not in the scenery or anything, like the moveset of the bosses. So it I found myself to be kind of bored by it but i still want to give it a chance and play it in full yeah um even if i couldn't get into it just because it's been uh -huh. so revolutionary you know well, that's like, true of a lot of like people who are so into bloodborne tend to not be into elden ring as much <laughs> it's like I there's guess, yeah there's like so. sekiro people and bloodborne people mm-hmm like people who are really I'm into Bloodborne, Bloodborne yeah. <laughs> people who are really into Bloodborne tend to also be really into Sekiro, but not into Dark Souls or Elden Ring. That's what I've noticed. It's true. They they really have they're really different kinds of game. Um, and I love Dark Souls, Bloodborne, and Sekiro, but only Dark Souls one. Mm. I couldn't get into the other two. And not because of necessarily asset recycling, um, but because of story recycling. Yeah. <laughs> like um, the exact same thing happening over and over. It's like just depressing. Yeah. The fire being linked and what whatever. Um, I I really hope that Dark Souls three would end the cycle, but it really didn't. So. It's true. I think Bloodborne where, where and are Sekiro are a lot different. Eileen, the... here we are. Oh, that's you. Good conf... I thought I'd actually put this some like cosplay build. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, I I I called all my skill builds Eileen, um, because she uses the Blade of Mercy. As I said, I like cosplaying. Um. <laughs> um. What was I saying? Uh, oh no, I said Bloodborne and Sekiro are games that have very different vibes from Dark Souls and Elden Ring. And you can still tell that it's theirs yeah, very yeah, much. Yeah. But they're just different. And um, I tend to really enjoy when FromSoft makes something very new and unique. Yeah. So like, I like the Dark Souls, I like Bloodborne, I like Sekiro, but Elden Ring was, it has a very big elements of novelty that I appreciate, but also, I don't know, just the, the what what's the boss that is like, that has a ton of arms and- Oh, Godric. The one that, yeah. Yeah. He was so much Ludwig on steroids yeah, yeah. that I <laughs> couldn't. <laughs> I was like, oh no, this is not how you do this, boss. <laughs> so, yeah. Actually, let's go 
through here. Oh yeah. Yeah. I remember I showed I showed that to Lance them. McDonald and he didn't know it existed for like six years. Really? <laughs> yeah, I, I was I was at his place and I'm just like he's like, oh yeah, you can walk because he was giving me like a an old like um like a debug build thing and I was just playing uh -huh. it and then I'm like wondering and I just do that and he's like, wait what? <laughs> no idea it was there. I think that I discovered that with this character. Yeah. Because I was just running around at random and I tried to do it and it worked and I was like, oh, <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, there's a lot of you're weird still, stuff like that because they, they, um, they just like automatically add collision to objects. There's all these like places you uh -huh. probably shouldn't be able to go to, but they just like everything automatically gets collision, so Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Sorry, there's a cat trying oh, to boy. Oh, there's now a cat on me, hang on. <laughs> My cat is next to me loafing. Oh. She's so sweet. Oh, are you okay? Oh yeah, I'm fine. Because I, I usually run past, but I'll stay here. Oh, here we go. Get out of the way. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> no, this happened. I was Sorry. um, I was co-oping with someone else a while ago, and we were both so used to running through everything on like muscle memory that when we did it, it yeah. like it triggered all the traps slightly too early. No. And then and then we both got killed in Forbidden Woods by the um. The the Molotov people. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Oh, also, I have a random question that is about lore okay. that I heard in in the iceberg video. Yeah. Um, you said at some point about the hymn in. In Yargul, yeah. I think. Yeah. That it has lyrics, and you talked about an Italian friend of yours that knows Latin, and I was like, "Is that me, or is that another friend?" It's Mel. It's Mel, yeah, Mel, because yeah. I didn't remember translating yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> I I was curious. Um, I would love to read the, the text. Oh, well, no, I remember us going back and forth over it for ages because, like, there's a line that none of us could figure out and we think, we think the Latin is, like, the sleeping slug, which sort of makes sense, but also, like, what are they talking oh. about? Oh, you want to know? Okay, slug. Here's some, like, uh, like, trivia about that song. That was the choir originally. Ah, oh, really? Yeah, that used to play in Upper Cathedral Ward. Instead of your hagol. May I forward a theory that the yeah. sleeping slug may be a Brit? I think so. Yeah, I think that because that makes a lot more sense in the original context. Yeah. Yeah. If if it's the choir, and um, she, I, I am still so fascinated by a Britus being there mourning apparently yeah. at the altar. And that is never elaborated on. It's so cool. Oh, I, I figured she was mourning wrong. Yeah, but like, if they, she was found, like the Ists was the first chalice brought to the surface, right? It's the first chalice brought to the surface after Bergenworth. After Bergen, okay, since Bergenworth. Yeah, yeah. So would Rom know her? No, I figured it was because, like, um, oh, we're getting into, like, me headcanoning and Briatus's mental state. But, like, um, <laughs> if you look at Abriatus, like, it talks about all the other great ones left her behind. Mm -hmm. Like, everyone in East ascended and Abriatus was left behind. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, like, if you look at the way Abriatus, like, is handled by the game, she's handled as kin. She's not handled as a great one, even though that's, like, confusing. She is. Is, yeah. That's true. Yeah, so I always assumed, like, Ibriatus was, like, kind of like Rom. Like, she's, like, one that didn't quite work and they left her behind. So then, like, they, they dig mm. her up and they bring her to the surface. 
and she finds like there was That's something how. there was something that was like her that was like this like failed great one and mm -hmm. she finally meets something that's like her, but it's dead. And she's like, that was my, like, oh. I've lost, like, the connection I could have had with something. Like, she, it's like game recognized game. I see. That's how I took it anyway. Because she's like, because it's, it specifies she's weeping. Should I go, sorry, to Old Yarnum? Do you want to go to Old Yarnum or do you want to just run through to um, Forbidden Woods? Because we've only got, like... I'm conscious of time. Because oh. I, I can just head through sure. the gate because I've got the church emblem. Sure, sure, yeah. sure, I'll get to Cathedral Word then. No problem. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll just open the yeah, gate. Yeah, she was the... She was the left behind the yeah, great the one. Yeah, yeah. And I like the idea that she didn't work out and so she's a great one, but she's also kin for some reason yeah it's it, well it's one of those things where like they it's like elden ring does this with the the word imperian where it's like it's uh -huh. thrown around and it appears to mean like three or four different things oh but i think the the japanese word for great one it's just like superior being rather than it I being see. like a specific um specific like Rather than being like a specific species, it's just like a very broad descriptor. We probably should do all the iron yeah. so in case we do Cathedral Ward. The Cathedral Ward. So I'm going to head there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because we're like, um, we have about like 90 minutes left and we probably could actually finish the whole game in 90 minutes. So. Oh my gosh, you're right. <laughs> Once you don't have to like I'm worry sure. about leveling up or like looking for gems or anything, it's not that long. Yeah. Yeah, we're all both set. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was a, good. Yeah, no, like that is, I think, a good idea. Like if we just I started think, pre -made. Like, Yes, my 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 weapon already has to twenty seven point two gems with stamina curse. They yeah. just dropped like immediately. <laughs> so I'm all set. Yeah, I, I was I farmed a single like decent curse gem last night, but it's got mm -hmm. durability down. Oh yeah. yeah. So you need I have to, to keep repair. I have to keep repairing, yeah. After old Yarnum, go repair it. There's there's Ultra okay, of Despair ringing. discourse in the chat. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, the fact that it's called Delta of Despair, I personally always thought that it was about a Brietus. So people are talking like where it used to be. Um, this is like, again, we can't, it's not like we have the old build, but it's, I think, fairly obvious, at least to me, that it was the original, it was underneath Bergenworth to start off with. Mm -hmm. um, I did this Which by, would explain like, I literally wrong. got a copy of, like, we, we have an old, old, old map. Um, it's like an mm -hmm. old on paper map that like it's an on paper like do they just printed out the layout of the game like from Google I think they did it in Google SketchUp first and then they printed it out and um, on that actually we can we talk about how we got that map mm -hmm. yeah we got that map because of this server that Altair and I are both in it's like a dozen people but we're all obsessed um, that, <laughs> uh, two of them who were in the UK. They were going to, it was like a Bloodborne, it wasn't really a Bloodborne exhibition, it was just an exhibition about video game development, and they were going to show off in-development Bloodborne stuff there. So they went there, and they just took photographs of absolutely everything. So we mm -hmm. ended up with, um, we ended up with a copy of that map. And yeah, on that map it shows, like, I don't know when it dates from, but there's no Altar of Despair on it. Like, the cathedral just ends. But there is this, mm -hmm. like, square structure that's underneath Bergenworth. And mm -hmm. if you cut out Altar of Despair and stick it underneath Bergenworth, they, they like, line up exactly. Oh, so, and that like, is so cool. Yeah, and we also know that um, Yosefka's clinic used to lead to a... Like, it wouldn't go directly downward. Um, you would go mm -hmm. down this, like, sort of winding pathway. And do you want to just run past Yura? Yeah. Yeah. There's this, like, winding well, pathway the, the that would go down. Route. Yeah. There's this winding mm -hmm. pathway that would go down. 
And what it looks like is that winding pathway, like, was replaced by... Basically, they got the Bergenworth oh cave. Oh my gosh, sorry. They got this Bergenworth I cave area. Yeah. I fell down. Oh, that's okay. I'll just, I'll just get to the shortcut. I, I fell down and I ended up right in front of Paul's door. <laughs> Yeah, so I'll just I'll just yeah, go. Sorry I'll, about that's that. okay. That's okay. You can just keep talking. Uh, no, I was saying I'll go to the the to the fog gate. I guess. Oh, I'll, oh yeah, the yeah, space. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, sorry. Yeah. I don't so, know what we're, ta oh, oh, we're talking. Oh, yeah, we're talking about the altar. Okay, so yeah. it looks like what happened was that originally underneath Bergenworth, because there wasn't always the lake there. Um, underneath Bergenworth, <laughs> there was a cave system. And then at some point in development, they cut the cave system out. And half of it became the cave that's under Yosefka's clinic, and half of it became the Altar of Despair. Mm, that's why I they see. look similar. And that's yeah, why they, the, they the Rom corpse is there, because it looks like that was the original way you fought Rom. It's like you went underneath and her body was there and you touched it, and that like like Mikolash. Oh. <laughs> and it war it warped you to um like a dream space where you fought wrong. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because I mean the way that it is now, it doesn't make all that sense. Why is her corpse there? I figure like the choir wanted it. Is the choir obsessed uh, I, with that shit and like of... yeah. How did it get there though? Like did but was everyone at Bergenworth dead at this at that point? Like, because oh, well, it's like it's not clear how much time passes, like after the yeah meet, meet Yana. But like the qu the choir, the ones that leave the note that's like, "Hey, don't wake up the spider." Like mm -hmm. that, like uh, like don't disturb the Bergenworth spider. Don't share the enlightenment. So I always took it as like. There may be, because we know the Altar of Despair resurrects things. So I'm like, were they trying to resurrect Rom to, like, make the sky go away? Oh. For some reason? That oh, no, sense. okay, I have my bell active, so, like, I'll just wait for you to show up. I'm outside the SP's room. Yeah, me too. There okay, we cool. go. There we go, okay. And I have cocktails. That is super interesting. Because, like, the thing about, like, all this weird cut shit that, like, I think it's sort of important to understand if you're doing, like, kind of archaeological approaches to these games is that all the, yeah. as the assets that the games use are made way before, like, the actual story is finalized. That's right. Yeah, so, like, basically they made the assets, like, a long time before the game was technically anywhere near complete. And then they end up sort of using the assets, like, to, um... Like, they sort of have to use what they have. Mm -hmm. And that's why you end up with, like, sort of weird things like, why is, like, this recycled? Why didn't they make another one? It's like, because From, From as a company aren't actually making that stuff. It's being outsourced. Like, yeah. if, you, if you look at, like, the credits of the games, there's these massive, like, um, credit lists, but it's not people who actually work at From, it's people who like work at like Blue Sky and stuff like that that they, they outsource the asset mm -hmm. making to. Yeah. Well, that makes sense because these games are, you know, Bloodborne is small, but the amount of assets is yeah, huge. Yeah. So it makes sense that they would outsource it. Well, I don't think From even and like also... necessarily um, make, because From basically like it's actually an extremely small company. But yeah, it's all, it's all out. Like, I know, I know people, like, I know concept artists and stuff who, like, worked on Elden Ring. And they've never been anywhere near the From offices. They were just, like, working at a place and it's like, hey, we need you to make, like, we need these models made. And they're just given, like, notes and, like, images and things. Like, make this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I know, I know someone who worked on, um, who made Fear. Oh. I know, I know someone who made, he made, um... Like, he didn't, like, not literally just him, but, like, he was involved in making fear. Mm-hmm. And, like, he basically had, like, they were given notes on, like, here's what, here's what she should look like, and here's, like, here's some pictures of what we wanted to look like, and, but they don't know anything about the characters necessarily. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. And also, there's something else I think to keep in mind when you look at, uh, you know, um, cut content or things that were moved or uh, early versions. That there has to be, like, even even if it's really trivial, there has to be a reason that they put the things in the place in yeah, a certain yeah. place for the final version yeah, and they yeah. kept uh, or cut some things so i think that I, I am personally for cut content i think that it really helps like complete some especially bloodborne like bloodborne is a game that is so mysterious yeah, it yeah. doesn't it doesn't say anything outright even when it's obvious so I think that doing archaeology of cut content yeah. really helps with you you know like it really helps uh, uh, with figuring out what they were thinking when they put together the story like what kind of yeah. ideas they had. And I feel like that's like the reason that it holds together so well is that like they changed the story a lot. Like, in terms of, like, the mm-hmm. sequence of events and in terms of, like, what character did what and all this other stuff. But the basic, like, the things the game is about don't change. Like, it's always about, like, the, the blood church and the great ones and all this other stuff. Like, that's always there. So mm-hmm. it, it remains sort of, like, thematically and aesthetically consistent, even if they keep moving things around. Yeah. I don't have the emblem. I thought I bought the emblem. You have to buy the emblem every time it's New Game Plus. You don't, do you? Uh, for for the. Do you, oh, do you keep the emblem? I don't know. I don't know. None of us know. This is the thing where like we've been obsessively I, no, wait, documenting actually, this thing for eight years, and it's like this is key work. We don't know. Actually, no. You gotta buy it again. Yeah, okay, I can that tell makes you sense. for sure. Yeah. I just yeah. didn't remember because I usually never use the emblem, and I'd go buy the workshop. Yeah. Um, so so I don't use it, but I remember the first times yeah. I played that I had to buy it again. Yeah, yeah. I made sure to buy it before we started. Now I don't need it. Okay. Um... <laughs> oh, people are asking about like the love, like when the Lovecraft stuff was added and stuff like that. The thing is, hmm. like, it's. It very obviously started as a continuation of Demon Souls. Like not not it doesn't necessarily have to be a sequel to Demon Souls, but like uh, it's definitely a continuation. Mm-hmm. And um because like Demon Souls was already quite Lovecraftian to begin with. It is, it's true. Like with the idea that like there's this horrible like all these strange mutations and things like dreams coming to life because of something that's just called the old one. Like, that's quite Lovecraftian. Yes. Um, now, the thing is, like, as far as we can tell with, like, very old builds of Bloodborne back when it was, like, called Scythe or Epitaph or whatever they were calling it at that point. Um, <laughs> at that point, it was, like, it was sort of structured a lot more like Demon Souls, where the, the great ones and stuff were going to happen at the very end of the game. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, oh, I got a little something to show you. These little messages here, right? Um, you need 50 insight to see these. Uh, to see what? You know the messengers that are around the lever that opens the gate from the other side? Oh, yes. 50 insight. Oh, you do? What? Really? That's, that's such a high amount to need these just, like, completely cosmetic thing that's in the second area of the game. Anyway, um, so <laughs> it was, oh, I have to get this way, don't we? Um, yeah, so it looks like the idea initially was like, oh, apparently, yeah, the, apparently there was a, there was an issue with the stream, but it's back now. I don't know if people missed anything, but, um, basically like it was structured kind of like De- a Demon Souls where like it would be just Yarnum and stuff for the first, um, like 90% of the game. And then what would happen is, like, it looks like basically you wouldn't do any nightmare stuff until the very, very end. Like, the final area would be the nightmare frontier. It would be like in Demon's Souls when you, like, go to the beach at the very yeah. end. Yeah. 
Yeah, it looks like they were doing like that. Like you the old one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then gradually they just put it more and more sort of up front. That seems to be the major change that we got. I'm gonna... I, I am running around in the plaza, but I'm gonna go to Amelia's door. Okay, yeah, I'm just unlocking everything. I'll bring Henry out. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and I mean, even if it's not a Demon Souls, like, structure the game anymore, I remember that when I first played in 2016, at the time I was playing Demon Souls. Yeah. And I recognized the so many things that reminded me of it. Yeah. Um, I forget now, but the the one thing I do remember was the doll's ornament. Yeah. Um, Stockpile Thomas. That is a callback to Demon Souls and Thomas. Yeah. Um, I don't remember now why the vibes were so similar, but I definitely noticed, even yeah. if I had no idea. Also, like, like Neff, Neff is, like, number one Demon Souls fan. And, like, she obviously yes. really, really got attached to this. In a way, she didn't get attached oh, yeah. to the Dark Souls games, yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention, like, when I was saying the games that I loved by FromSoft, I forgot to say Demon Souls, which is a shame because I love Demon Souls, um, <laughs> and it it was also its own thing. I think Demon Souls is really unique. Yeah. Um, even if it was, you know, the spiritual prequel to Dark Souls, not in the story sense, but yeah. in a game sense. No, it still um, does feel like really unique. unique. Yeah. Oh, by the way, we will not discuss the Demon Souls remake here. It's, it's, it's forbidden. A bit controversial. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. will not get into that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was thinking of other things that I listen that I thought of when I was listening to. There we go. That I was listening to the podcast. There were a lot of fascinating things oh there is one thing that i that wasn't touched upon but it's a curiosity of mine yeah um why is Bergwinworth so tiny did he used to be so yeah, tiny it, or... no it was the race the research hall was part of Bergenworth. not the research hall the lecture hall the lecture hall. Yeah, I th when I first played, I got confused yeah. because this game is confusing. And I thought that it was Bergenworth. And it was like the real Bergenworth that had been sucked up in a nightmare. Yeah. But, and I guess it used to be. Well, no, the original layout of Bergenworth, like, we've seen it, it's on that map that, like, um, uh, Livy and Lace found. That's, like, mm -hmm. this is, like, literally an official from map. This is not something someone told me. And, um, mm -hmm. Bergenworth is, like, it's a full campus. Like, there's no lake. It's, like, a big, 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 like, kind of walled-off area. And it's, like, Willem mm -hmm. studies there, and it goes across, and the, um, the lecture hall's on the other side. Like, it's the two buildings. And then, like, we were saying there's that big structure oh. underneath it. And um, that's why, like... Oh, yeah, it's really Amelia. Um, so that's why, like, if you look at the layout of those two buildings, they're very, very weird. So, like, all those mm -hmm. little... Um, the You know, in in, um, in the lecture hall, there's this... It's literally just a, a circular room with a bunch of chairs in it. You know mm -hmm. those that are off to the side and it's like what the hell is yeah. this yeah um that's yeah, because rooms. the the um the observatory dome that's on the top of bergenworth now used to be on that mm -hmm. building and it was at the top of that that's why there's that circular part off to the side because it's designed to mount the dome oh. on. yeah and it serves no purpose now because they moved the dome to um to bergenworth and that's why, like, when I you go to Bergenworth, it. it's like this this place is full of, like, 
It's like a bunch of like weedy nerds and their like two hundred year old teacher who's in a wheelchair. But like, yeah. also the <laughs> only way to get to the top of it is a ladder, which is like not a great way to go about that. So and it's because like that dome didn't used to be there. So yeah, that's why it's like that. And like all those little um ah uh, basically um. The way that the lecture hall has all these little things off to the side, these little tiny side rooms, that's because they mirrored it. Like, there was originally, like, something, oh. there's something different off to the side, and, like, I don't have it with me at the moment, but I was going over it with Lance ages ago. And basically, they got the, the lecture hall, and then in order to fill out one of the sides, they just, like, copied it and mirrored it. I see. Yeah. So that's why, but, like, that's why those now... places are so weird. Like, the layout's so strange. Now the the game, like in the current version of Bloodborne, that is the school of messes, right? The virtual. And... I'm pretty sure. I think it's still Bergenworth. Like okay, like oh, in in oh. in the Japanese version, it's explicitly Bergenworth. In because it, it like it just straight up says the Bergenworth oh. lecture hall is floating in the nightmare in the key description, but um they they leave the word Bergenworth out of the English version, so it's like yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and the school of men's is all sucked up in the nightmare now. Yeah, so, they're they're, so like they're all basic... the ones in the nightmare of men's. Yeah. Now the the school of men's is the nightmare, and that is still Bergenworth, which is during with the nightmare. It gets confusing, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> well, but it makes a lot more sense that you know that is Bergenworth and. The little lake retreat for Willem would be maybe a place for the inner circle. Yeah, yeah. And their experiments. Well, like they they rewrite Willem so he's doing like moon viewing, which obviously he wouldn't have done initially mm -hmm. because he wouldn't have had the the um the lake. But like it makes sense now, obviously. The lake. Yeah. Mm hmm. They, it's like it's like a Japanese a, thing where you bit... you sit by a lake and you look at the reflection of the moon in the lake. But um, and yeah. they they rewrite it so he's doing that. But like that obviously wasn't there originally because you would uh, there would not be a lake there. And, like originally there's there a, would be a lake to reflect. The there wouldn't have been a lake there originally. It was just like some. It was just like paved. Um. Oh, the other the other weird mm -hmm. thing like we've talked about this a little bit is the idea of the upside down Bergenworth. Have oh. we discussed this? I don't think so. Okay, this is like I one of those know. things that like we've gone back and forth on so many times. And if you like listen to our old videos on it, like we probably keep changing our opinions on it. So basically, there's a bunch of like data that's floating around that references something called Upside Down Bergenworth. And we were like, what is Upside Down the Bergenworth? Ring? Pardon? Like... The Elden Ring place? Well, yeah, that that's that's where the down. story is going. That's the end of the story. So basically, I'm by the Fidden Woods lamp, by the way. Um, so basically, there was this thing called Upside Down Birkenworth, and we went back and forth on what it was, whether it was actually upside down or whether it was, like, the other theory we had is just that you were in, like, when you're in Moonside Lake, um, they may have, like, just to save on processing or something, just made an upside-down Bergenworth to use instead of, like, trying to calculate a reflection. So you'd look up and see it just uh -huh. an ups rather than, like, having it look at, like, upside-down Bergenworth and then, like, the material sort of creating a reflection. They would just have, like, an upside-down one. Yeah. But, um, like, like, like the mirrors in Mario 64 just have another Mario behind them so they don't have to calculate a reflection. Mm -hmm. Um, we're like, is that yeah. what's going on here? And we thought that for a while. And then Elden Ring happened, and there was a straight up like <laughs> oh. upside down. Like you went through this place that looked a lot like Bergenworth, and then you used you used uh, an item that made it go upside down. You went through it backwards. So that sort of confirms to us, yeah, they probably were going to make you do it upside down. And like the upside down Bergenworth assets, oh, yeah. like they were for like partially for the interior of the building, and they did have collision, and mm -hmm. they would have like worked. Um. Yeah, but like so we were saying, sense. like a lot of the sort of dim, like the the collision in Bloodborne is procedurally generated, so it's like we weren't one hundred percent sure. It's like, well, you know, there's a lot of reasons something might have collision, but yeah. 
still, that's a pretty specific choice. Yeah. Because if you want to do, if you want to do something to calculate, to avoid the water having to calculate yeah. emissions, can't you just make an empty building? Like, yeah. Keep the outside. Well, we were wondering if it was like so, they they did want that, and then they just like instead of having to get someone to make an empty building, they just got the existing building and just like inverted the z-axis. Flipped it. Yep. <laughs> well, you know, and there's also the fact that upside down is a big thing, Bloodborne. Yeah, yeah. It's a big thematic thing with the hunters and the yeah, blood yeah, absolutely. The head yeah. and So that make a lot of sense if wanted to do a a Bergen worth upside down, it works. Yeah. <laughs> in, it, it'd be in a nightmare, like in a dreamland. Yeah. Upside we also. Bergenworth. Okay, this is the part where where Alex and I got Oop. killed because we both triggered the the um the Molotov. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. You have to be you have to be careful. Do you want like... me to build them? No, it's okay. It's okay with you. Just sure. if you try to do it from muscle memory, and there's two of you. It screws you up because yeah. they're targeting a different one. Um. Anyway, so as for how you got to Upside Down Bergenworth, we have a theory that's like, it's backed up by some stuff in the game, which is that you would use the Bergenworth telescope to like look at the moon and then the moon would like, mm -hmm. it would kind of be like it would invert and then you'd end up in an upside down like a version of the... um the observatory like the moon would make the observatory and like you were going into like a reflected version of Bergenworth on the moon or something it's really weird but it looks like that mm -hmm. that's like the closest thing we have to an explanation of why it was there and that might also I explain see. like why there is a um why there's a trapdoor that doesn't go anywhere because that might actually have originally been there for that's the right. upside down version like you might have popped out of it like mm -hmm. from below Something like that. We're not sure. That is cool. I didn't know it. Since this is and like, I mean, it's like a two-week for... event, so I might actually Sorry. like. I don't know. It's because like Return to Yarnum is two weeks, so I might like show off some other stuff, but not today. <laughs> I've got um, the Bloodborne press kit the... in the corner. I can show that off at some point. Oh. I was thinking that FromSoft is all famous for, like, having similar ideas in different games. So, yeah. Uh, or, or maybe they don't use certain things and then they use them later. Or, like, yeah. you know, Boo Village. So yeah. it would be, it would make a lot of sense that... <coughs> yeah. Bergen used to be a thing. Yeah, well, I mean, Elden Ring is, right like, it's just made almost entirely out of stuff that's cut from other games. Like, the like the Wolf of Radigan yeah. is, like, the, the boss from Dark Souls 3 they didn't use, and, like, the... Um... Like, the, the weird um, worm face monsters, like, they look like something from Yaha Gore. I'm gonna... Can we just refresh because of my uh, fragile weapon? I'm, oh, just gonna, sure. I'm just going to yeah. send you back, and I'll be back here in a couple of minutes. And yeah, like mm -hmm. like those. Um, I don't know if you noticed, I'll tell you, but like you know, there's there's those enemies that look like they're like a, a shrouded person with all these like things hanging off their face. In Elden Ring. Yeah, yeah, they like um they they look exactly like the statues in Yahagol. So we're like, oh, these were probably like a Yahagol enemy at some point. And they put them in. Oh. Yeah. No, I didn't see that, but I did play most of Dark Souls 3, and the, the pilgrims, like, yeah. remind me of that too. The I don't yeah. remember his name, but Yo. the pilgrims that were white, like that shroud, remind oh, yeah, me of the yeah. Bloodborne statues. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, and Pastor was really pointing out that, that like... Um, uh, Niall and O'Neill from Elden Ring, like they're like knights with um with a prosthetic leg and a halberd, and like oh, we know the, that yeah, yeah and there's go. like a cut Kanehurst <laughs> boss that's like a knight with a prosthetic leg and a halberd, so they probably like it's probably like that move set recycled or something, and like 
Um, is the... it the first new boss? Or oh no no, it, there's two of them. Boss? There's one of them in um the swamp, like Caleb's swamp, and then there's one way later on at the end of the game, and it's like a big knight guy yeah. with a wooden leg, not a wooden leg, like a, he's got like a bladed so... metal leg. You might I not see, have seen because it's such a huge game. Was Yobu. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh no, we're talking about Elden Ring. No, I said first mini boss of Elden Ring is Gyobu. Oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was wondering if he if he also was one of the Kaner stands, but I haven't met him yet. Yeah, and being uh, and the curse creeping uh, up your leg, your yeah, limbs. Yeah, and like the the knight, the knight statues that are in Stormvale, they look exactly like the um, concept art of the Kanehurst knights that they didn't use. I'm ringing by the lamp, by the way. I don't oh. know if you're there. Yeah, I was. I was telling you, sorry, that I'm at the bottom of the Vader. Oh, oh, okay, right, so cool. Yeah, can continue. There we go. That is so cool. I wish we had gotten the upside down Bergen worth it. Yeah. This game's small. Like I feel like it benefits from being small. I agree. And like there's like um, a there's like a much, much bigger uh, Yosefka's clinic they didn't go with. Mm -hmm. Where it was like instead of just waking up and going out the front door, you had to like stage an escape. Like you had to like drop out of one of the windows and run along the roof and everything and like get out the back. But um yeah, like, okay. that's, they ended up not doing that. And I feel like it's better that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where are, like, what path are we taking here? Um, I, a lot I have them. no idea. <laughs> My my like okay. the single Let's most the exhausting book. experience I've had working on BB Wiki was when Mef wanted um in text descriptions of where every single item was in the game. Oh and it had to be like so you can imagine writing like in like one or two sentences where every single item in Forbidden Woods is without repeating a description. You can't just say like uns like <laughs> go down the forever. pathway and take the second left and then go here and then like under behind the tree there's like two things and it's like I know <laughs> it all looks the same. Yeah. What about these giant altars here in the Forbidden Woods? I I no thought that I never asked about it oh because this is this is like bergenworth doing excavation stuff do you want to just run past the oh, giant snake okay. do you want to just bolt past it because i can't be bothered fighting it okay okay there we go snack yes yeah, so like this area here this is like where bergenworth was doing all their digging that's why it's got all these like holes everywhere and like this is like the like they're so they're, they're, ex they're excavating chalice dungeons there, it's it's the top of the chalice. Yeah, dungeons. yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Because I was thinking that they look like Thumerian stuff. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Actually, people just bring up meth in the chat, so I'm just gonna need to defend me for a second. Um. Sure. So I'm going to paste some links in chat. This is like stuff you can use to support Bloodborne Wiki because like if you've been there you'd know it doesn't use um, any like advertising. So Mev's paying for the whole site out of pocket, she's paying for all the hosting, um, and like it's just something that she's doing. She's not getting recompense for it, so th what we do when we do these is to just say if you're watching the stream, if you want to kick Mev like five bucks, two dollars, anything like that, that's like that would really help, so Mev links. But it's coffee.com slash Mephistophea. And then we have paypal.me and it's called helpmeth. Thank you for saving me. <laughs> it's 
It's okay. I'm here to be your bodyguard in the meantime. It's it's uh, the opposite of when I'm streaming with Sin. Yeah. <laughs> Help me! I saw the oh, no! little, <laughs> the little bit of um her platinum run when yeah. you were telling her where to go. <laughs> yeah. Hang on. Uh, just think a bit where. Sorry. The. Hello there. Yes, Sin is very proud of the fact that her um her first ever Dark Souls victory was a soul level one run. <laughs> well, yeah. And she's like completely hammered at the end because she's just drinking throughout it, and then I'm she's like we're in the kiln and she's just walking <laughs> off the sides of the bridges constantly. Um, you know where my Dark Souls level 1 run is stuck? Yeah. At the bed of chaos. Oh no. <laughs> I guess, like, at least that's a gimmick boss that, like, mm. you don't really need high stats to kill it. I know, but <laughs> I can't get there. That's the problem. <laughs> Um, and also it's stuck at the Four Kings. I've come very close to killing them, yeah. but... Yeah, Four Kings new game are probably, like, the hardest, because it's, like, a... It's all level one, so it's, like, a DPS fight. It's a DPS check with a level one. It's a DPS one, check, yeah, not... where you don't have, like... You don't where have you the didn't DPS. Have DPS. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, DPS missing. Should I help with the katana guy? What is it? I'm trying to shaman bone blade one of them. Oh. Okay, cool. I should be able to parry these dudes, but I guess that the the delay affects them too. Yeah. That's kind of why I never try parrying if I'm doing a stream, like if I'm online. Cause no, I'm like, me neither. Yeah. Also, I just prefer like, using uh, like double-handed I... weapons. When I when I am in co-op, I never parry for that reason. But I hope that that because they're single enemies, it would be a bit easier. Oop. Oh yeah, like these um these guys are bugged on one point zero if you play it unpatched. They're bugged. They're bugged. They don't drop anything like when you kill them. Oh. They don't drop the rune, but it's weird because like they don't drop the rune, but it treats you as if you've got the rune. So if you played this unpatched on one and you beat Shadows of Yarnum, you can never get that you Blood Rapture have... rune because it'll it'll say that you already have it, but you never got it from oh these guys. Gosh. Yeah, yeah. Well, thankfully the Rakuyu is an amazing two-handed weapon too. I, I actually, when I was getting ready for this, I, I, I finally no damaged Lady Maria. Um, to, and then oh, I'm like, I wow. can't be bothered getting the Rakuyo because I have to deal with the fish guys in the well. I'm like, I, I can't be bothered. I don't know if I ever no damaged the, the main game boss. I've only ever no damaged it. bosses like when I'm not trying to, when I'm just like, I just need to get this fucking over with. And I just like, get yeah, hyper efficient <laughs> and just like constantly <laughs> chain parry her. The same happened to me one time that I was with my 99 blood tinge build. Yeah. And uh, I just was completing DLC New Game Plus super quickly without even thinking about it. Um, I already had the, the blood tinge gem, so I was running a crazy strong build, so I wasn't even paying attention to the fight. And... Then I went to the Orphan of Cause, and I just devastated him. Yeah, yeah. But not in a casual way, just uh, I got all the timings right. I was yeah. just doing um, R2 chain backstabs and continuing to use the Rakuya R2. And so then I saved the fight because it was yeah. crazy. Like, it yeah. was crazy good. 
and now it's my most viewed video on YouTube. <laughs> it's like twelve thousand views, and I wasn't even trying. Yeah. I just read. Man, the time is flying by. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna switch and out my gems because I weapon. yeah no I I want to use the um the whirly gig on Rom. Oh yeah. Yeah. Marquee is still only plus eight. Now I have. Now I can do a plus ten. Yes. Let me check because I have also um a gem that is kin down, so I gotta change it. Beast down. Okay, there we go. I still need a perfect radial. I think beast point. Yeah. I actually use some of the the hacked um dungeons to just get some decent gems. Oh, the I see. Yeah. Well, it's like I didn't have long because I basically just had to get this like everything done in about. God. Oh, I'm really sorry. Like it hours. was supposed to be the opposite. You oh no, no, that's that's fine. That's fine. No, because <laughs> no, because like I there was a another like amazing um, Bloodborne wiki thing where like Meth wanted, she wanted like confirmation of what messenger spawned in the bath with what badge. So there was a day <laughs> where I just like played up to like get one badge. Took a screenshot of the path, reset the file, played through a game, <laughs> got exactly one badge, and then it's just like, so I beat the game, I, I got to like, I didn't say I necessarily beat the game, but like I played through it like eight times in one day, just to oh get every gosh. single one of those little images. And was that, was it different? No, it was incredibly tedious. Because it was just like, play through, get one badge, reset, and then play through, make sure you don't get the badge you got last time, but just get one more, reset. And like, the last one obviously no, is know, Germans, but... yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, th did it change the way the messenger is It does, yeah, there's a specific, there's a set messenger for every single badge, except the Firing Hammer one from the DLC, which doesn't have one. And you only had to have one at a time? Yeah, one badge like, at a time. So it was like no. play through it was like play through, get the badge play from where through. the pig is, back to the dream screenshot, no, no, no. reset the game, play through, get like the sword badge from the tower. Uh take a screenshot, <laughs> reset, play through again, get like um you know like you know, like the uh badge from like Cathedral Ward, reset, like it was Oh. I know, but I was wondering, can't you do it, like, doesn't he do it with the most recent gem badge you looted so you don't have to do it no. like that? No, no, we had to have a separate no. one for every single one of them. Which one counts in a normal playthrough? What? Like, which animation shows in a normal playthrough where you have all the badges? Um... You can go to the wiki and see. <laughs> There's a page oh, of them. Okay. I forget which ones, which are basically like every single little messenger that shows up in the bath. They show up with a specific oh. badge. Yeah, so so you get more and more messages. Yeah, it keeps adding them. Yeah. Anyway, I'm by yeah, the yeah. I'm by the Bergenworth lamp. Me too. Oh sorry, I forgot to ring. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> sorry. It's okay, I unlocked the doors okay, and got um... rid of the um the um the uh, garden of ice. Oh okay. Do you, uh, uh, should I come to the fog then? No, no, so we're not at Rom yet. I just did like a okay. I just did a circuit so the door was open. Oh yeah, Rom is gonna be tough with our with only our Rakuya. Yeah, that's Kill why Bill that's why I switched Arches. to the um the whirly gig. 
Because Whirly Gig, like... Just... Whirly Gig completely decimates her. Yeah, that's yeah. right. It's the best weapon. Like, skill builds are so strong whenever you can parry, but then you get to Rom and it's a tragedy. Yeah, Rom is like... One of the, the common things that we get, like, on our server is just, like, I'm stuck at Rom. I'm stuck on Chalice Rom. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, she is, yeah. like... There's a lot about Rom that I think is is a little over the top. I think so, too. Yeah. I, I don't like her design as a boss fight, honestly. That's the thing about Bloodborne, where, um, like, every boss that's, like, really, really interesting as a concept... Um, tends to not have a great fight That's associated true. with it. Like, Mikolash is the other one. Like, Mikolash, Mikolash is a fascinating mm -hmm. character, but then the fight is just you chasing someone for ten minutes, and if you fuck up, you have to do it all over again. That's right, it's so annoying. There's the whirly saw yeah. in, in action. Yeah. Oh my gosh, stop it. Pizza... Pizza cutter power. Um, <laughs> now, now, M, M, M in the chat is like, leave Mikolash alone. <laughs> Mikolash <laughs> is her blobber. I like Mikolash's fight, yeah. but I think it could have been improved the quality of life stuff. Like, the thing is, like, not his, having to... his ability to one shot you, like, makes it really sort of like. That's that's right. Yeah. I think when I did my level 4 run, he was one of the hardest. Yeah. Because of that reason. Because if you don't have the DPS to knock him out, like, immediately, yeah. it is really challenging to keep him from um, from one-shotting you. We were talking the about it. the more time you're in there. We were talking about it earlier. Um. But, like, when I fought him last time, I just snipe him before he gets into the room so I don't want to have to deal with the call beyond. Yeah. I think that I used... When I when I did my level 4 run, especially the New Game Plus, yeah. I used poison knives yeah, to yeah, bring yeah. his health down, and then I sent him in the room Yeah. so that I, I wouldn't have forever to fight. I'm just showing off now, like, we talked about Bergenworth initially being much bigger, and you can see, like, if you look into the distance, there's just these, like, obvious sort of big, flat, square spaces. But, like, they were originally walls and things that we don't use anymore. And, like, you can see, like... This is interesting, actually, like, the, um, the Lunarium, like, it looks like it's open from the outside, but from the inside it's closed. Mm-hmm. We go over here, like, you can see that... Like, there's just a fence that goes all the way around, but, like, the actual Bergenworth ends here, but then if you look, there's just, like, and, like, it's paved and everything, like, it's clearly, like, a structure and it goes off into the distance. So, like, originally that lake wasn't there, and what the, what kept you in is there was just a fence that went around it, and that's the fence, and the reason it's there is because, like, that was all paved and you could walk on it. Anyway, let's get our knock off. Should we kill Willem? Uh, I don't know. No, let's leave him. Yeah, you were saying in the podcast that I was listening to the other day about Rom, yeah. that it points to the lake, yeah. and that is curious. Because it, it was his secret, right? Yeah. So... Okay, so um, I'm going to aggro Rom, and then that should make you able to go through the fog. Yeah. Okay. And I'm trapped. Uh, Damien is trapping me against the, the door. <laughs> Come on. Ploof. Oh! <laughs> there you go. Okay. So Rom Rom is half down. But we've got a lot of spiders to deal with. Yeah. This is the and part of the fight that, like, I'm critical of because um, if Rom didn't have ranged attacks, that would be one thing. But the fact is, if you try to manage the spiders, 
Yeah. Yeah, um, you get meteor. It's kind of a mess. Yeah. Like, there's so much going on in, in it that it, it you can't... Because, like, Phalanx in Demon Souls is one Ooh. thing, because Phalanx can't really do anything from range. So, and Ooh. also, like, she's very slow, whereas Rom is, like... Rom can hit you, her minions are very fast, so trying to, like, do it safely is almost, like... You can still mess it up very badly, because there's just so much going on. Oh, yes. And, like, the drop attack it's that the true. spiders do, it literally ignores defense. One shot, too. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. which we think may actually just be a, be a mistake in the code. Because apparently yeah, very it, few attacks really actually do that. It shouldn't do all that damage. Yeah. It has no business. Okay. Yeah, and I died. <laughs> okay, we did it. I died to a spider attack. Yeah, we made it. Um, If, in case you're wondering, like... As I was mentioning before, I I did a one HP run at level four of all the FRC chalice bosses. So yeah. all the bosses in the chalices. And if you're wondering, the hardest ones are tied, and one is Rom, and the other are the Merciless Watchers, which seems ridiculous. But when you yeah. have three targets oh, no, absolutely. and you barely yeah. deal yeah. any damage, yeah. it's crazy. And that is the reason why they are the hardest bosses, both yeah. of them. Yeah. Because you've got so many targets oh, and yeah. so little same, DPS. The same thing happened when I was doing um, really low-level Dark Souls 2 runs. Because Freya mm -hmm. has these little little shithead spiders and little there's like another boss with these little rats that run around, and they're usually not a problem. But if you, can, if you die in one hit, suddenly they're like really really impossible to deal with yeah, <laughs> yeah. we we just saw the it's scene true. we just saw the scene of like the woman in the blood-stained wedding dress above like the red lake while the moon descends in a baby cries that like i always think of every time someone's like you're reading too much into this i'm like it's not fucking subtle it's not <laughs> It the really number isn't. of people who have flipped out at me for ever bringing up sex in bloodborne is like i I don't know what you want me to say. The birth imagery is everywhere. I know. What it's so ridiculous about? that people get, like, defensive about it. Should I go to Yargul? Yeah, I'm just going to get the first um, one. I'm actually going to have to go because that probably did a number on my durability. So. Yeah. Yeah. Are we doing well? We yeah, we've got... Yeah. Minutes. yeah, okay. I think we can probably we manage it. finish. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So someone's asking about the counter damage that you give to the spiders after they drop on you. So my understanding is like that's not actually the defense dropping. It's that their abdomens have no like the the, the abdomen of the spider has less defense. So when they're buried in the ground, yeah. like their abdomen is sticking out. So you're always doing a ton of damage every time you hit them. Mm-hmm. I was reading of the description of the Mensis cage while I was waiting, and they said they control the unseen village, so yeah. Yargul. Yeah. Um, but are any of them still alive? No. Because oh well, I, I guess curious. like Damien is because we just met we just met him. Yeah, but also you can summon Herrick when he's dead. Yeah. So maybe it's a phantom, like yeah, in Dark Souls. Yeah. Was like whether Mensis are alive or not is like a complicated question because they've like warped themselves to the nightmare, so like their physical bodies are dead. Like yeah, I'm, I'm standing next to one now. Bodies. Yeah. So like they're they're dead. like this. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is like here we go. Um, when the game starts, like Yahagol is implied to like not be in this state. Like this all this is we're coming mm -hmm. into Yahago like post Red Moon. Pre Red Moon it was probably yeah. like they were probably actually like running around and doing stuff. Like that's why you get kidnapped and stuff, because like Mensa's is still in control of the place. But we only get here like after that's why the singing stops, because everyone's dead after the Red Moon. Did they just die? Actually we can right we can, now? we can pop. Or... That's how I always took it. If we drop uh, where's this like I Oh see. there it is, yeah, so well, I got confused. 
It could be a time thing because I was thinking they look mummified, so maybe yeah, they've been yeah. dead for ages and Yeah, there's like the, there's the, corpses when you show the up there in um chooses. in the like regular like when you get captured and taken there by the kidnapper, like there's like corpses in chairs there as well. But the implication mm -hmm. is like it was kind of she'll be you'll be gonna do up a cathedral ward. Mm -hmm. Let's go down let, let let's grab the key. Yeah. Yeah. So like the implication we'll, we'll is like they go they all got when zapped. We if we have time. Yeah. They all got zapped. <laughs> when the red moon happened. Like Mikolash has obviously already always been there. Yeah. Yeah. Also remember yeah, this also this guy down it, here. It, we didn't see it, but like that mm -hmm. guy that he's the only one of these that uses a um sleeping animation. Oh really? Yeah, most people never see it because once you kill the the bell ringer, like they all sort of spasm and then they stand up again. But like if you come here and you don't kill the bell ringer, he is asleep by that treasure chest. And he's the oh, only one so in the cool. whole game that uses the sleeping animation. The animations of Bloodborne are so strange. Like there's so, just so many and so many that are difficult to see. Yeah. Like I was thinking, the merciless watchers, when they heal. eat a pellet, yeah, they and heal themselves. Restore yeah. their, they heal. Yeah. And you don't really get to see that one yeah. often. Okay. Well, there are there rare animations that are indeed in the game, but you don't often see. Have we have we talked about the uh, torch waving animation that consumed Meth and I's lives for several weeks? <laughs> okay, so, you okay. go first. Here. Okay, okay. So, um, one of the things people bring up about Bloodborne is like very rarely characters will yell death to the minister, like the Yarnamite Huntsman. Right? They'll yell death to the minister, and that oh will, yeah and um, people were like why do they do this because they only do it sometimes which led to all these theories about why they did it and one theory was like oh you have to be wearing like church gear or it has to be this has to be that and the answer is actually it is tied to a specific animation where they're waving a torch back and forth really yes um that animation it's like a defensive it's they, they go like this they go like that i'm doing it on camera um they do that and what will happen is um, when they are doing that animation, but only that animation, it, like, I think the pointer on the table that's telling it what, so, uh, what, um, what sounds to play is, like, it's, like, off. Like, the pointer goes off or something. And they play dialogue that you shouldn't hear. Like, they play dialogue from cutscenes that aren't in the game anymore. And that's what Death to the Minister is. But it, it only works oh out with that one animation where they're waving the torch back and forth, which there's no consistent way to trigger. So Meth and I were just like, is there a way to make this happen every time? And I imagine there isn't. Uh, I don't think there is. I think it's like you have to sort of get close enough to them that they, like, they're not attacking you, but they go into a defensive pose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, that's like that's also why they they yell like um, where are you going? Uh, I wanted to see if the hunter was still there. I I didn't know which one you killed. I didn't kill any of them. Oh, sorry. Do you want to kill them or, oh, or no? Oh, okay. Well, I'm just gonna run. Well, one's one's was chasing me now, so let's just run. Anyway, um, so yeah, they play dialogue they shouldn't play. Like it's like it's entirely mm -hmm. lines that shouldn't really be in the game anymore. They're like in another table and it's like grabbing it's grabbing them from a table that it shouldn't be using. So that's that's why it happens very rarely, because it is tied to one specific animation that we cannot get them to do consistently. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's just uh bolt for it. Oh, also, like I yeah. heard, and I haven't seen this, but I heard it from people who would know, that like there are versions of the people in the walls that move they didn't end up going with because apparently like it might have been too gross oh my god but like there are people in the walls and like their hands are like reaching out creepy yeah 
That would have been cool, though. Yeah, yeah. I gotta say. Here's the birth imagery. Oh no, we we skipped that. <laughs> just being <laughs> conscious of time. Sorry. I'm just being conscious of time because we've got we've got 24 minutes, 25 minutes. I reckon like. Do you want some trivia about these uh, bell maidens? Yes. So the one that shows up in the cutscene, I think because it's the only one that's rigged to work in a cutscene, is actually Vicar Amelia. Like the ones oh. that show up in the belt, those are Vicar Amelia's model with a different cloak. I think because the Vicar Amelia model is like the only... Vicar Amelia, for people who don't know, like is literally a bell maiden. They just show... That's why they only show her from behind, because if you could see her face, she'd have like a zombie face. And, um, oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, so I, I think she's probably the only Bell Maiden model that's, like, rigged to work in a cutscene. So what happens is, like, all the Bell Maidens, when we're in Reborn Summon, they're all Vicar Amelia. So if you could, like, if you go under the, um, the map, like, in a map viewer, it's full of... Oh, you've already almost killed it. It's full of, like, um, copies of Amelia's Pendant. Uh -huh. That they just hold below there because it's part of Amelia's model. I think it may be a pendant joke. <laughs> hey, baby. It's okay. Yeah. My kitty sometimes wakes up meowing no. and wondering if she's dreaming. Yeah. My cat is very, she's like 17, so she just sleeps all day. Yeah. Okay, next the lamp. Uh, yeah, where Nightmare, do you want Nightmare to... of Mansus. I'll just run through the building. It's just a straight line. Yeah, I'll go to the base then. Yeah. Mogo's loft base or the actual first? Oh yeah, we'll just go to Mogo's loft base. I'll just run. Through oh, this as everything. as you prefer. I thought I thought you meant Mogo's loft. Oh no, I mean I because I'm in the lecture hall now because I've walked there. Actually, I'll show you. Hang on, this is what we we're talking about before. Oh, okay. This area here. This like circular space. The reason it is like this is because that used to have the Bergenworth like observatory dome on the top. That's why it's built like this. And presumably this was like some sort of, I don't know if it was a spiral staircase or something, because like there is a spiral staircase below the dome in um in the game now, but like this this used to have the dome on it. If you could see the lecture building from outside, the top of it would have like a um just like a circular piece missing, and that's because the dome used to be there. Sorry, should I go to Nightmare of Mensis uh, or Nightmare if you want. Frontier? Confused. Oh, Mensis, sorry. Okay, I'll go to Nightmare of Mensis. This game is really so small. <laughs> yeah. It's small, but it's very varied, like when you think about, like, all the places you mm -hmm. go, it feels like this really huge journey. Like you yeah, start yeah, off no and then like you're in the them. forest and then like you're in a weird lake and then you're in like another dimension and it all happens like quite quickly. Yes. Yeah. It it does feel like a huge journey. I, I was actually saying that I am surprised at how tiny Bloodborne is yeah, because yeah. it doesn't feel like it yeah. <laughs> at all. This is also, like, um, where I am now is part of, like, we've talked about a little bit about it before, but, like, we're reasonably certain that when the Nightmare of Mansus area was designed, it was just supposed to be a castle behind the cathedral. And where mm -hmm. we are now sort of, like, lends credence to, like, if you can imagine approaching from here, you'll notice it does have the, like, hexagonal basalt columns that we associate with the Nightmare. But it's also just got like regular trees and grass and things. And I think eventually the basalt columns sort of stop being used. Mm -hmm. Um Yeah, so I'm fairly certain that like this place was like I'm talking very early on, not like, you know, just before the game came out. I might actually go repent my stuff. Um, but like it was probably behind like this is at very early, like years and years and years before the game came out um that that was behind the cathedral like we mm -hmm. still we still have like remnants of the path and everything we know there was something behind there and it did lead there 
and we're fairly certain like that was the nightmare. It would have gone like Nightmare of Mentors would have been there, but it would have just been a like um a just like a castle, like it wouldn't have been a nightmare area. And yeah, mm -hmm. you would have been able to walk there and then we're fairly certain like you would have gone there and then that would have led to the nightmare frontier as like the climax of the game. Mm -hmm. And like I've seen like a very, very old, like literally like unfinished, um version of Nightmare of Mensis that like it's even more like Latria. Like it literally has a big like statue with a crossbow in it that was gonna shoot you. Like it was that much oh like Latria. They I don't know how far along that one got. It was like very low poly, but like it was like initially sketched out. That's that's what would be there. That is a rough part of Latria. Yeah. Okay, so let me put my sedatives. yeah if you think about like what the nightmare looks like it's like the sort of the weird like green lake areas and like everything is extremely sort of like odd looking and then this is just a straight up castle and i'm pretty sure like that's because when they made it it was supposed to be like something else it also was latria well, it was just, like, part of Yarnum. It was just, like, I think it... This is, like, a very, very complicated, like, series of relationships, but we think what happened was this was the original idea for Castle Kanehurst. And then oh. what happened was the Castle Kanehurst that we ended up with is actually part of Lothric from Dark Souls 3. Yeah. <laughs> which sounds insane, but, like, we have a fair amount of information that backs that up. I don't know if it's actually true or not, but, like... I, sh I showed this off a couple of years. Actually, for Return to Yarnum 2021, I showed this off. But, like, there's artwork that's, like, official concept artwork of um, Kanehurst. But it's got the Dark Souls 3, like, assets in it. And it's called, like, Castle Archives. And, like, it's got, like, the Dark Souls oh. 3, like, knight is there, like, as the character instead of the hunter. And there's, like, um, there's, like, Lothric banners and stuff hanging up. So it looks like that was probably like an early version of Grand Archives that got ported across to Bloodborne to become Kanehurst, because Kanehurst became this place. I see. It's yeah, it's like because they were they the assets are kind of interchangeable. I just want to send the lift down, because uh, we're I haven't leveled up all game, so I think we're maybe reaching a point where we might get one shotted by Mikolash. Actually, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. I fell. <gasps> oh no! My no. first death in the game. No! <laughs> My first death in the game is an elevator. Well, at least you got it. So yeah. you can get the lamp and then we yeah. can continue. Okay. I might actually get the lamp and just run through to like the ladder, the, the elevator right before Mikolash because it's right outside the door. Okay, I'll go, then I'll go. If I, and... if I survive every boss fight from now on and this would have been a completely deathless story apart from an elevator, I'm going to be so annoyed. <laughs> I know. The the um Imagine if you were doing Burning Dream and this is how you died. Oh. Uh, I mean I have <laughs> I have a number of similar stories to that. It's like yeah. um, well, okay, one of the things on the Bloodborne wiki that no one cares about but took us like two days is um NPC Gilbert. Mm-hmm. Because when Gilbert is a beast, he's flagged as an NPC, which means if you're co-oping with someone, um, Gilbert yeah, shows up. Him. Yeah, he show he shows up as like mm -hmm. a um, a like a, a phantom that sort of thing. Ghost. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, you can imagine how fun that is to get, because you have to like play through to the red moon, uh, with like. <laughs> no, but the worst part is because Gilbert is flagged as an NPC. He, um, the other monsters will attack him in Yarnum. So what happened was we, we had to get through to there, and also the thing is Gilbert won't spawn unless you're by the lamp. Like, he doesn't appear otherwise. He's not in the map. So you had to, like, it was so, like, infuriating because you had to get to the, the lamp to make Gilbert spawn and then really quickly get out of there. Um, so Gilbert went back to patrolling. Without yeah. Gilbert chasing you, because if he chases you, the, like the huntsmen around Yarnum kill him. 
Like, it was serious. Like, it took us, like, a day. It was really, really, oh really difficult. Oh my gosh. Like, Meph and I were just, like, up all night with, like, <laughs> pots of coffee trying to create this scenario. No, that's where awful. NPC Gilbert was visible. It was horrible. And it's just, because like, the end I result is a little that. tiny, little tiny PNG that no one's ever seen. I know. I I'm so sorry because I'm pretty sure that that happened to me once. Yeah, I could yeah. have saved you so much work. <laughs> no, no, because it, it, and, like, it had to be, like, um, Meph, I had to summon Meph to get her to take it, but, like, I couldn't be in shot. But you can't just, like, if I summoned Meph, she would not have been able to trigger Gilbert. It has to be the player that triggers Gilbert to appear. Like, it's just such a fucking mess. Well, you can... You, you, I hope you backed up your files. <laughs> we did in the end, but, like, oh my god. The other one was, um, the other longest thing was, like... <laughs> Trying pungent blood cocktails and shaman bone blades on every single enemy in the game. Oh my god. Where it was like, my job was to do that to the base game, and then some people from Tomb Prospector's job was to do it to the, um, the chalices. It was like every single enemy in the game. Gosh. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. I really should have brought more poison what knives. Is, what are these puppets that he has around him? They're Mikalash's puppets. Do we friends. know? Uh, that's like a complicated question because they look exactly like um, one of the portraits from Kanehurst. But oh. that's like, it's probably not supposed to be that anymore because why would Mikalash have like a whole lot of identical Kanehurst marionettes? My theory is like, you know, when you go into Kanehurst and there's the women as the ghosts, right? Holy shit, he takes off like 75% mm -hmm. of my health in a single augur. This is going to be a nightmare. Um, so like my theory is it would have been like the ghosts and then the puppets like together. Uh-huh. Oh my gosh. He wiggle. <laughs> In a 1.0 you can you can stun lock him when he's teleporting out. I'm really annoyed you can't do that anymore. It's funny because earlier when I fought him, like when we started our call, um I I used the um, um a visceral and yeah. for for people who arrived later i'm using a 50 skill build right now so i used the visceral and i consumed his entire health bar and then he resurrected oh god to do phase two <laughs> yeah i think they're like it's so, if it's like the other bosses phase one and phase two are just two different mickle ashes and they just share a health bar yes okay <laughs> So don't don't go if down, don't go down, curious. don't go down. This okay, this is this is the like I'm, I'm fucking sick of this shit thing you do. Do you have any ash? <laughs> and bring any ash. Okay. It's just this. Like if you just keep yeah, doing I this, know. he gets stuck in an endless loop. And you don't That's need to That's what he did when yeah. when I was in level four run and he, and I used the poison knives. Yeah. Let's just bully. Let's that. just bully him from up here. I'm sorry if Emma's still watching. And you can tell when he's poisoned. Yeah, there he we go. Doing it. Yeah, yeah. If he blinks out of existence, that means he's actually taking poison damage. Is he? He's disappeared completely. Okay. But he's also healing at the same time. To might me, be it might like, be confused because we're like. Might be an online thing. I don't know. Usually, you can. Usually, it only takes two knives, to, to, two or three knives, to poison him. Anyway. No, I was saying that my health bar, for some reason, like his health bar, is going up and down. For me, it's okay. really strange. Yeah, I remember that I used poison knives until his health was down, and then I went to fight him because of my low damage. Oh, also something that, like, um, people might not know is if you play the game unpatched, the thing we're standing on is not here. 
Oh, this so is how a do jump. You get to it's him? a jump. You have to jump oh from gosh. here and do that. And like, yeah, just that to make just terrible. to make this fight even longer. <laughs> even longer, and like, if you jump down, you start over. Is oh he, my gosh! Yeah, it's like I remember um, Mal. Mal ended up stuck like that because she she played unpatched initially. <laughs> Oh, and she's no. like, this is horrible. <laughs> Where are you, old shit? Hey, he's there. Oh, he's- oh, okay, there he is, okay. Um... Okay, we may as well just fight him properly, there's two of us. I say this now, but he's gonna- he's gonna augur us, so he's gonna- he's gonna call beyond and we'll both die in one hit. Well, I have 70 vitality, how much do you have? Um... You have 70 vitality, but you're a phantom. I have 50 vitality. Oh, well, we should be okay, maybe? Like how, like, um, you're like this expert, and you've done, like, blood level 4, and it's like, can we beat Mikkel Ash? I don't know. Oh, oh there we you are. can. Okay. Yeah, we okay. can. No well, worries. <laughs> <laughs> it, the, okay. the main thing is that we should basically, like, alternate our attacks so okay. when one runs out yeah, of stamina, try to stop. the okay. other... Okay, stand. let's go. Where are you? Get over here. He's oh already my God. going no, for the you... fucking. Oh my God. Oh no, he's doing it. Sorry. <laughs> he did two. He did two. I he did. He him. did two. A call beyonds in a row. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Freaking Mikolash. He he doesn't usually do it right away like that. It literally is showing me the bone marrow ash thing, um, as if to taunt me. <laughs> I think I actually have enough just in the dream to, like, upgrade my pistol, so I might do that. Wait, what if I sent you my 99 blood tinge build? <laughs> I don't know how With that would work. With rapid poison. <laughs> Hang on. S sorry? I want to say... If I can. Or okay. I can send you a strength build also to put to pizza cutter him. I have one. Oh no, it's okay. I, I, it's just that we he we got he did auger twice in a row. That's the only problem. Yeah. Okay, hang on. Okay, I'm gonna go to to Murgus Loft and come. Oh, no, okay. that, that's a stupid idea. I'm gonna buy as much bone marrow ash as I can. <laughs> the thing is that it all goes to waste if then you die. If we get him from the um from that little sniper spot though, like he has no way of stopping you. Because he mm -hmm. just keeps coming out of the wind the the mirror over and over again. You can just boom 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 and just kill him that way. As someone, oh, no. uh, Torby, Torby yeah. in chat is saying that, like, actually, seriously, oh, yeah. that the the auger seems designed to one shot specifically um, phantoms. Like, oh. apparently, it does extra damage to phantoms. It may be a bug. I mean, okay, we can't, the problem is we can't it. tell in this game what's a bug and what isn't. I know. <laughs> Okay. I am. Well, I've always been curious as to why these elevators spin. <laughs> it's such a strange choice. Okay. I guess they're probably like maybe they're on something that winds around when it goes up. Well, it seems to be a spatial thing, but yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. I'm in front of me flash. Yeah, I'm calling from that now. So We have four minutes to beat him. <laughs> <laughs> Probably won't catch him in four minutes. If we can beat him and then beat the wet nurse and just submit to Gurman, we technically finish the game. Oh, it's my story and I'm sticking to it. Are you 
getting? Pardon? What ending? Oh, are, are we? I'm. I think if we just submit to German, that'll technically be the end of the game. Yeah. I know it's it's technically the end of the game as far as speedruns are concerned. I know. Okay, well, good. it's a speedrun. It's not like a reinforcement caller is effective. <laughs> Oh gosh, okay. I didn't. I didn't think I've I've told you about this, but okay. Um, but uh, the other day, like one of these days this month when I had PS Plus, yeah, I was I was just uh, playing online at random, like on the search on the root chalice, and um, oh my god, did he one shot? He oh, one shotted me from behind with the orgo. I tried to stop him. <laughs> um, sorry, I was saying. No, that's okay. I was playing and I ended up at the file the amygdala. Yeah. And there was this guy that got summoned uh, along with me, <laughs> whose nickname was not exactly super safe for work, but I I'll know the one I you mean. A, like... I saw you post it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So the polite way to say it, his name was But Demolisher. Yeah. And Amygdala completely destroyed him. <laughs> One of the best moments in Bloodborne. I'm putting the, the to I put the choir set on because it's got the highest arcane defense. Oh, that's right. I don't know if that will save me, but because I have a lot of vitality and might. I literally got Blind one shot it at full oh. hit points. I have like fifty vitality. <laughs> Crap. Um It's like where do you work love. out at the library? <laughs> Looking at the choir garb while you wait. I have a choir badge. I'm gonna figure out where I put it. I have like a replica choir badge I got on Etsy. Oh really? Yeah, I don't know where I've put. I have that too many awful. little little badges and things on my desk. It's a mess. <laughs> uh, do you mean you have their badge that's on them, or like that Camille, or do you have the Cosmic Eye Watcher the Cosmic badge? The Cosmic Eye Cosmic Eye badge. Oh man, I would love to have one. It's so pretty. Are you? Have I summoned you and not noticed? Not yet. No. Okay. Um. There we go. Here we go. I'm here. I I'm in front of oh, the okay, boss because okay. I don't have the bridge anymore. Sorry, do you still hear me? Yeah, you sound fine. I had an alarm on my phone. That's okay. This fucking Scooby Doo boss fight. <laughs> Also, I love that it goes to the corner where his his minions are, yeah. so it makes it even harder. It's the way that, like, he's just he does nothing and just waits for you to attack him, and then he. I remember, um, I don't know if it works anymore, but when I was playing this once and I hit him really, really hard with like a charged R2 from a Ludwig, from the church hammer, and he went through the wall. Okay, <laughs> that only died? took- Yeah, he died from fall damage. Oh my gosh. 
Have you recorded that? That's no, that that amazing. was like literally. I don't know if it was probably on like a really early patch. It was like the first time I fought him. He just oh, fall, he falls through the wall. It. Yeah, he falls through the wall, and then like his hit points just sort of disappear, and then nothing happened for a couple of minutes. Then I just got prey slaughtered. <laughs> oh, um, you were talking about this building here. Oh, yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you, is that now the School of Mansis? Is it their buildings? Oh god, okay, so this then is what, one what? of those, like, I think in order for it to make sense, you have to assume this building was always there, like it was there in the Nightmare and they found it. Oh, okay. Because, like, like it's clear, there is... like, they're, they're trapped here, like it's not their building. Mm -hmm. And I think the idea, like, at least at the moment, because this has gone through so many different iterations, but, like, I think the idea at the moment is that, like, you know when you're in the the, the Hunter's Nightmare and there's, like, the Grand Cathedrals in the distance? Mm -hmm. I think this is the Grand Cathedral of wherever this used to be. Yeah. Okay. That's always or been the my... research hall or Well, no, yeah, I think it is, because, like, like, everything about it sort of, like, lines up with that. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the the building you see from the Nightmare Frontier is it this building? It is this one, yeah. There's like a low poly yeah. model of it that's in the distance. Mhm. Mm so that means that this is the Nightmare on top. Then there's yeah. Loran. Then yeah. there's. No, I think that Yarnum this this this. Bottom. Oh, he fuck. Oops. I think this, I think this, like, is the healing church of Loran. Oh, really? Because, like, I think the the Nightmare Frontier Mensis area is Loran. It's, like, their version of the Hunter's Nightmare. Mm -hmm. This is their version of the healing church. And then what will happen is, like, in the future, this will all happen again. And they will find, like, mm -hmm. someone will find the Hunter's, the Hunter's Night Nightmare, Nightmare, and then they will mm -hmm. find, like, the research hall healing church area from that, and it will be, like, their version of this. Yes. Yeah. And then they'll find the Yarnum, like, yeah. the... Okay. Yeah. Oops. Deep breath. <laughs> Deep breath. Oh, fucking hate I'm this I'm gonna group. have my gun ready. Okay. Just in case. Where is he? Okay, he was close enough. If you land really close to him, he tries to punch you. Oh my god. Oh my god. Why? It wasn't even... I wasn't even in range. Yeah. You can do this, I believe in you. I don't. You died? No, 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 I'm just, uh... Come on, don't... Oh, he's doing it. Don't you fucking... Oh, God, I, I staggered him out of a call beyond. Oof. Okay, this is really tense. Shit, come on. He's got, like, one hit to go. He's trying to punch me for some reason. Come on. <sighs> just die, you horrible man. Oh, my God! Did he kill you? He had, like, one hit to go. And he double organed me. No. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, I gotta tell you the truth. At nine, I have another stream. Okay. Uh, to this time to per to be to watch, and okay. I am starving. So okay. How about instead of Mikolash, we do Ludwig as the conclusion. Um. Oh, but you have to run all the way there, right? Yeah. Mm, it's okay. I might just try to kill Mikolash myself. Oh, sure. Um, <laughs> I have a question for sure. the chat. Sure. Would you be interested in another stream where we do the DLC? Because we were thinking about having two streams, main game the first and DLC the second. I can also um, do a stream of time zone manipulation, which I've done before. Where, oh. like, I, I, because I have, um, I have, I can show it off on this actually. I have a saved file that's from like 1.0. Oh, nice. So I've got the Yosefka fence glitch active, so I can use that to change the time zone. 
Oh. That would be really cool. I showed it off like ages ago. Um, you can do weird stuff like you can go to Yahagul before the Blood Moon. You can see the um, you can like go to the last part I of Yahagul, see that at sunset. You can um, you can do weird shit like you can fight Amelia and Eileen at the same time. <laughs> I would love that. I would love to watch it and uh, be in chat with you. If yeah, you that'd want. be great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well then, I'm going to be on my way. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Yeah, thank you I'm so much. I'm so sorry I could read the chat. Um, Do you want to just I, plug I um, you... plug the wiki fundraising thing again before you go? Uh, sure. I hope you all had a great time. And um, let me see. Uh, you, you mean the links? Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, we we streamed for in support of Bloodborne Wiki and it's on our map. And uh, if you uh, want to donate to the wiki uh, by any chance, you can do so at either her Kofi uh, Kofi link, um, which is Kofi um, dot com uh, slash. It's the one that's on screen now. Mephistophia. And you can also contribute on PayPal. Um, wait, wait a second. What was the... the math at the PayPal? It's uh, paypal.me slash helpmath. Okay, yeah, that, yeah that's right. Paypal.me slash helpmath. All right. Thank you, everyone. And we'll let you know about future stream. My weapon's if about we to do break. If we do it return... No! <laughs> oh my gosh. This is a train wreck. <laughs> Mikolaj, what the heck? He ruins everything. He ruined, yeah, he destroyed the entire city and killed everyone, and now this. <laughs> yeah. All right. Have a good end of the stream. I hope you don't stay up for no sorry i know it's daylight there but yeah i hope you don't have to stay stuck on nicolash for two years well much to... okay here i go thank okay, you bye Sophie. Bye. Thank, thank you, you. everyone bye bye What else do I have? I'm just going to throw everything at this prick. Yeah, there is a durability curse gem on it. That's why. Oh, you can see this. Is what happens when he gets cursed? When he gets poisoned, he just goes like this. <laughs> You see, we're actually not doing enough, to, and like my weapon doesn't work. My weapon's at risk. So I'm like, oh god, how are we gonna do this? I wonder if I just like, I may end up having to apply like bolt paper and try to, uh, try to just like rely on the additional flat damage that I'm getting from the paper. But like, I think if if we fuck up, I'm gonna have to go back to the dream again. And if I do, I'll just stock up on projectiles and try killing him from there again. I'm sorry about this. Okay. All right. Where are you? Shit.
See, I think if you stay close enough to him, he's less likely to do a call beyond, but he is more likely to fucking double auger you. Oh my god. This is why Cos doesn't like you, you prick. There. There. That was legit tenser than, like, fighting often of cause. It's important to note that literally the entire plot of Bloodborne is that Cos is, Mi is that Mikolash is Cos's reply guy, and she's just ignoring him. Okay, so Altaya wants to do the DLC. So, um, I think what we'll do is... We will... I'll kill the wet nurse just so we don't have to do it next time. And then I'll run to where Ludwig is. Yeah, exactly. This is the thing Pastor Roberts is saying. You can trivialize Orphan of Cause by parrying it. You can't parry Mikolash because he very rarely does anything other than spam um, arcane items. What was I wearing for? Yeah. Like, Bloodborne's boss designs are, like, very strange when you think about, like, the conventional wisdom of, of this sort of design being, like, you teach people how to fight something and then you sort of gradually iterate on it. Whereas it's, like, Cleric Beast can't be parried. It's, like, a giant thing that you break the limbs of. Um, Gascoin you have to parry, but then the boss after that is, like, something that's, like, a beast and you parry it. But then it's, like, Amelia is back to being a beast again that you can't parry. Um, Shadows of Yarnum, like, you parry, but there's three of them. Rom is just, like, nothing you've ever fought before. It's just so much, like, strangeness in the, um... In, like, it's just sort of a series of, like, very inconsistent bosses, which, like, I'm not complaining about at all. I'm just saying, like, it's interesting that it's done that way. It's not, like, if you look at Sekiro, where it's, like, they're gradually teaching you how to do deflection. Whereas this is just, like, straight off. It just throws, like, different kinds of bosses at you. That's Queenie. Very nice. Uh, back before we had like a model viewer, this was sort of the only way to get a good look. She's not hostile. Oh yeah. Like a lot of nice, nice little details in her. Do I have enough arcane to use beast raw? No, I don't. Um, basically, if you have, if you have beast raw, um, you can actually raw because she's. You can see she's solid. You can roar her around. This is actually this is how I met Meth. Um, because I was showing off how to do this on Twitter, and she's like, "We should, we should touch base and like collate data." But basically, you can beast draw Yarnum, and she'll fall down the stairs, and she'll like walk back to this spot. The shackles, yeah, she is shackled. Um, she's actually shackled in the boss fight. And then when she gets to phase two, she breaks the shackles. You can see she's got the ring of betrothal on. Oh, it's not the same one, but like she's got the wedding ring. But she's presumably married to a great one. 
It's very hard to control this camera. There you go. There you go. This is how I used to have to get footage um, before I got the model viewer. But obviously we didn't have a model viewer for like six years, so... Oh, the little details on you can see like there's the... where Murgo was taken. I wonder if we can see her shoes through here. I feel like really dirty doing this. I'm not wanting to look up your skirt. I'm trying to show off your shoes. Can't see them from here. Okay. She has um she has shoes that look a lot like actually I have Ariana's shoes on. She has pretty much the same shoes that Ariana has. Like that. It's very hard to get a good look. She has those shoes on. They're like white. Alright, let's just see if we can fight, uh, wet nurse. Someone asked a question, oh, does Lancer build apart from the network test? Um, the thing about the builds is, like, there's a lot of NDAs and things involved in them. So, like... There are builds floating around that, like, people aren't supposed to know about and, like, stuff like that. So, like... People have access to things that they're not allowed to show. It's not, like, specifically just Lance. And, um... You know, like... There's things floating around that we're just not allowed to show anybody. Because, like, it's not, like, you know, people could lose their jobs over it. It's, like, illegal to do. So, you have to be very careful. Like, there's, like, I know there's, like, really old builds of Dark Souls 3 floating around that, like, again, like, people sort of have, but if it gets out that they have it, like, they could get in very serious trouble because it's, like, this was technically stolen. Um... Like, the people who leaked it could get in trouble. It's, like, really... People like to, like, when you say, oh, it's NDA, that, like, you're making excuses. Just... Because, like, we've been accused of, like, oh, they're hiding behind NDAs to, like, not have to back up what they're saying, which is why I don't say that much. But, like, there's plenty of stuff that, like, if that got out, like, a lot of people would get in very serious trouble. And it's not worth doing that for minor e-fame. It's not like it's fucking WikiLeaks. Like, it's a video game. No one died. Oh, hey, LT, we beat Mikolash. I beat Mikolash with a broken weapon. Okay. Is she not going to bother doing purple mode? That'd be nice. Someone could cooperate today. Mikolash didn't. Oh, hey, I staggered her out of purple mode. Nice. Hello, Sin. People can tell I didn't type that because I was playing. Why does she have shackles? Um, the shackles are actually like a Victorian birthing thing. Where it's like if uh, someone's giving birth, like you shackle them so they're not struggling around. It's like really bad. Um, but yeah, that's why she's got them. Actually, you know what I might do? Okay, what I might do is, um, if Altea wants to do the DLC, I might set up the, um, the, the records ending, because Imposter Yosefka should still be in her... Hang on, oh no, this is a new game, duh, okay. So hang on, Imposter Yosefka should still be there. So I should be able to grab her cord and grab the cord from the workshop and I'll have three. And then we'll be able to um, do, this, do the squid ending. 
when LT is back. Oh, Murgo, Murgo, I can't show it off because I'm on, this is like a new file, but like Murgo's body is the Yarnum stone. Like when it's, he's like dead inside of her, it's kind of disgusting. But like he, Murgo died and his body sort of like calcified into this weird like blood gem with a baby inside it. That's Murgo's body. Murgo's soul or consciousness, whatever you want to call it, that's what's in the pram. Or, or stroller, if you're American. Why am I going this way? Ah, oh, because I'm going to use Sefka. And, like, th there was some use for the Yarnum Stone that they didn't use in the DLC, where, like, if you brought the Yarnum Stone to the Hamlet, um, there would be this, like, little poem that would play about like it's similar to the like bottomless curse bottomless sea poem it's just about like um a ch sweet child of cos you know the time is naught and the sea rumbles afar or something like that and um if you did that that would i think like it it triggers you getting something it may have been how you got milkweed originally uh, rather than having the, not milkweed, the accursed brew. It may have been how you got, like, the, whatever that trigger is originally. Uh, Murgo's Calcified Corpse. Sin, what do you think Murgo's Calcified Corpse would do if it could slot it into a weapon? Sin and I actually have a Murgo character. But we don't use him very often because he's extremely annoying. Mom, help! Mom, get me out of here! Mom, I'm stuck! Hurry up! It's like the cry of Murgo echoes across the night. Mom, get me out of here! Okay, Sin, Sin make, a, make a reference to Reborn. You know you want to. You know you want to make a Reborn reference. Also, Mirko's voice is just Jersey Miyazaki, but pitched up slightly and angrier sounding. I think the fact someone with a <laughs> someone with a berserk avatar making a reference to Kitekyo Hitman Reborn is like exactly what this channel is. Where else would this happen? No sin, I don't do notes live. I have to get all the characters together and they're very difficult to get hold of. Uh I guess, like, we can talk a little bit about what was removed from here. So, like, um, you'll notice that the clinic is absolutely massive, and a lot of it is just pathways that don't really lead to anywhere. So this was, like, initially two floors, and there was a second floor, like, under here. And these are here, actually, I think, I think this is where it would have been. There was, like, a door here. And, um... When you initially like arrived in Yarnum, instead of it being instead of it being Yosefka behind like that door, yeah, she, instead of being behind there, she and it was wasn't Yosefka at the time; it was a different character, though, like Yosefka equivalent. Um, she would be there'd be a door here, and she'd be behind there. Like you can see, that there's a lot of extra rooms and things here that just aren't used. Sorry, my cat has gone to sleep on my headphones. I don't know why I have headphones in, because LT is not here anymore.
like this is something that I've I've talked about like I know some people don't agree but like I'm not I'm not being like oh well that's that's I'm theory crafting this is my theory it's like it it just it's interesting because of what it sort of says about Yanam that like this place like this I I don't believe this was purpose built as a hospital I know the outside looks like the Richardson Olmsted Center but like inside like this is not a hot like where are the patient rooms like it's just like it's just laid out like a house like this is like a weird this is a house this is not like a, it's a very 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 big house it's not all this stuff has just been like moved in there like this is a waiting room hi Yosefka um like it, it, yeah it's a magic it looks like the, it actually hang on I'll show you um it looks almost exactly like the mansion from Resident Evil you imagine you've come in from here Like, you can see, like, it has, like, the upper balcony. And then, like, there would be stairs either side of that that would lead you back up. Like, it's really not laid out anything like a hospital. And, um... It's the same as, like, happens with the, the healing church itself. Like, they set up a... They set up a hospital in a church that was already built as a church. So, like, it's... It may have, like, become, like, over time... A clinic but i don't think it started as one and like i was saying like what a mansion yeah like the thing about um about like yanam is that the healing church sealed themselves off from everyone else so like the source of yanam's blood supply and healing supplies that's been like chopped off like they can't get in there anymore and i just assumed okay what's happened is because there's no other clinics yosefka has set hers up in here because there's no other buildings to use. Because it's like the biggest building, I guess, in that part of the city, so they need somewhere to put everybody. But yeah, like, that's not a... It's not purpose-built as a hospital. It doesn't make any sense as one. Yeah, the other thing is also, like, Yosefka's not part of the Healing Church. Like, if you talk to her, she's very much like, hey... Leave the patients alone, I can't risk, like, um, I can't risk exposing anybody to infection, and she's actually trying to, like, fix everybody up. But then, if you go to, like, the healing church themselves, when they're taken over, when it's taken over by the imposter, she's like, yeah, bring everyone in. Come on, open the door, it doesn't matter, because the healing church don't want to heal anybody. They just want people to experiment on. So now I'm going to try the second most annoying thing other than fighting Mikolash, which is those drops you have to do to get into the um, Abandoned Old Workshop. Oh, the wheelchair guy. I don't know what the story with the wheelchair guy actually is. Um, but like... Yosefka herself, like, the whole reason that the Healing Church take over is that they're not in charge, if that makes sense. Like, if the Healing Church were always in charge of Yosefka's clinic, there'd be no reason for the imposter to show up and take it over. But, like, if you listen to what Yosefka says, she's like, hey, everybody, like, I don't want to risk exposing anyone to infection. Please don't, like... You know, I don't want to put the patients at risk and all this other stuff. And then actual Yosefka is the total opposite of that. Like, she's the one who says, yes, yeah, send everybody here. And if it were the Healing Church all along, they would have just started by saying, send everybody here. Because the Healing Church aren't actually trying to heal anybody. They are just trying to get bodies. This is the wrong way. I'm going to the choir. It's down. The other thing about the wheelchair doctor is, like, he was originally a much uh, bigger character. Like, if you watch if you watch the intro, like, this, the FMV intro that the game has, that doctor is in it. And, um, you know, I think, why is this dude in the intro? He basically just shows up in a cutscene and then never again. But he was originally, like, he would go around on the streets and stuff. Like, he'd be 
popped around Yarnum, sort of giving you like hints and things. Oh, hang on, there we go. I want to see, hang on, we'll just start taking people on a tour, where the fuck not. Do this all day, it is 2.30pm. You can see there like that, put your wheel down, thank you. That's the path you take to Yahagol now, and you can see it's like completely different. Like there's, like there's a big gargoyle statue, there should be a well, but there isn't, and then there's this like wooden structure over here that appears to lead down to where like that's the entrance to Yahagol. And that's because, like, this whole area was, like, hacked up and put back together again later on. But they didn't update the distance model. You can also see the, the workshop from here. It's a slightly different place. Well, yeah, the, the people in wheelchairs is interesting, given that, like, there's the whole thing about, like, the beast hood starts creeping up your legs. And that's like the part of you that turns first. So the idea that like they either like they maybe they have broken or amputated legs because of the the scourge, and that's why they've ended up there. So oh god, here we go. Um, yeah, it's just like messages and gravestones. Okay, let's deep breath. No. This here is why I've never attempted to do, like, a deathless run of the game, because I can never get this consistently. Yeah, it lines up with the ropes, but I'm just very bad at lining myself up with the ropes. Like, I, fig I figured out when I first played the game that, like, it was the ropes, because the ropes lead down, and there's always a platform under the rope. It's just that this does not have particularly precise uh, jumping or falling controls. I feel like if, if they were to, like, update Bloodborne, um, honestly, like, adding the jumping and the sneaking from Elden Ring, and also Sekiro, but, like, Elden Ring sort of shows they work in, like, this system as well. Um, that would be incredibly useful, because, like, there's references in the game to, like, the hunters wear black because they sneak around Yarn at night, but, like, there's not much sneaking going on in this game. You do not sneak very much. Um, you just sort of, like, you can move a little bit slowly, but there's not the sort of stealth mechanic that you maybe would have been interesting if you did get... Where did my echoes go? Oh, one up there's got them, don't they? Oh, it gives a shit. Okay. Try. Ooh. Oh, thank god. There's the hardest boss in the game. Oh, you know, I don't think they're actually going to do it. I don't think they would actually, like, patch in a jump. I'm just thinking, like, if they ever, you know, did, like, I know they, like, made Bloodborne 2 or, like, the Bloodborne successor or something, or, like, someone ported Bloodborne to the Elden Ring engine, which might hypothetically be possible. But, like, yeah, being able to do, like, just... When you're in, um, when you're in Raya Lucaria... And there's, like, a very long section that's optional, but, like, you're basically parkouring across the rooftops of Rhea Lucaria, and it's, like, that would have been, like, you can sort of, like, maybe they had that in mind with Bloodborne. Like, not, not as a gameplay mechanic, but sort of thinking of, like, the idea of these, like, kind of stealthy people, like, running across the rooftops and, like, you jumping from building to building, which ends up not happening. Uh, okay, so we did in fact grab three third chords. Let's grab them all now, whatever. Hmm. Um. Okay, and she wanted to go to Ludwig, so let's just quickly open the DLC.
I think like a lot of the best, the best parts of Elden Ring are optional. Like the rooftop area is really cool. And like the Eternal Cities are really cool. I guess the Eternal Cities are technically optional, but they signpost them. And notice that because we just ran through it, we've rescued literally nobody. And now it's too late, they're all dead. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. What? Where? Why? Uh, Radan's pet cat. This is the thing. Sin hasn't played enough of Elden Ring to like come up with weird questions like that. So it's up to you. Oh yeah, yeah. Acarondas. Yeah, the the spiral staircase. The, I'm almost certain that is supposed to be the entrance. And it's just like broken apart from it. Rayo Lucari is interesting because it almost looks like the area itself was pulled up out of the ground, which almost fits with what they do there because it's like all this like gravity space stuff. Radan is a horse girl. I don't know why I'm getting these items, I don't need them. Um, here we go. I was gonna run through the wood thing. We can start a Maltese. Actually, let's hang on, let's show this off. So, one of the things that, like, they sort of tried doing and it didn't work was having the hunters and the beasts fight each other. And it actually does work in the DLC, but the way they do it is that they just have the hunter here facing a wall, so he doesn't see any of the beasts. And then when you trigger him to appear, he starts fighting them. But, like, if he were already facing the beasts, like, they would just fight each other at the start of the map loading. That's how they get around it, is that they just have all the hunters, like, facing walls, and then they're all on, like, little triggers that make them turn around when you go by. You can actually, um, because uh, you can get here reasonably early. If you do this, because you haven't actually fought anyone or even been hit, if you do this early on, um, you can just get the hunters and the beasts to kill each other, and you get a ton of blood echoes, and they drop some, like, decent, for the, that point in the game, gems. You can show up here and just, like, grab. Grab stuff you probably shouldn't have. Because the enemies kill each other. Yes, I did! Yeah, okay, so, um... Jonathan Glover's pointing out, like, there's a clip from Germa that's, like, Orphan of Cos's scream is, like, from a, um, a, a stock sound effect library, and it's literally called, like funny man yelling or something and to make it often of course they just pitch it down so it's like Grrr! instead of Grrr! there's a lot of stock sound effects in these games the the one i think most people will, will notice is um the demon on the bridge in dark souls 3 the stray demon it makes the same roar that the demons in doom make that like Grrr! I used to have those sound effects. Um, it's called, what's it called, like, Basic 2000, I think. And it's just this gigantic, like, I had an old version that was CD, not DVD, but it's just, like, tons and tons and tons of sound effects just in a big library. I had it um, back when I was at film school, and I did not have a big enough hard drive to um, copy the whole thing before I left. Those little uh, stationary gun turrets that we just ran by, those are actually in the base game. Um, they're on the maps in Cathedral Ward. They just don't. They just don't load. There's like p uh, tons of those little like stationary guns set up to like trap you as you're running through the ward, but the game doesn't load them. Oh, 
Why am I going out here? This is the problem with having muscle memory from playing this game for too long, that you just start going places you're not supposed to go. Let's trigger the big boom. Where's the boom? There was supposed to be an earth-shattering kaboom. There we go. Now this, okay. That is neat. Because what actually happens here is that if you were, like, looking closely, the guy in the wheelchair has a, a delayed Molotov attached to the wheelchair. And it's proximity-based, so when you approach it, it goes off. And that would be really useful if delayed Molotovs actually worked like that, but they don't. They just have a delay. But if they actually worked like a landmine, that would be rad. Delayed rope molotovs are, like, absolutely hilarious as a concept, because literally it's something that it goes behind you, and then it goes off a couple of seconds later, so it's only useful if you're being chased by something that's an extremely specific distance behind you, of which I don't think anything like that exists in the game. But if you could drop them, and then they went off when someone walked over them, that would be great. Really cool reveal. Ba bomb. I love this little vista. So, let's go. And that should make us uh, cool for Altair. Next time we're doing this. Oh, okay. So, um, I don't think... Okay, I don't want Bloodborne 2. And I hope we never get, like, literally Bloodborne 2. But, um, we talked a little bit before about how, like, Bloodborne is... In a lot of ways, it's like the spiritual successor to Demon Souls. It may actually at some point have been Demon Souls 2, and then they sort of, like, made it its own thing. But, um, uh, what I would like is if they continued this sort of, like, through line. Yeah, like a horror-themed thing. Like, going from, like, Demon Souls, which is, like, horror-themed medieval, through to this, which is, like, horror-themed sort of Victorian. And if they come up with something else to do with that setting... Like, I don't know what they would do with it, because I, I think if you go further than Victorian, like, it starts to change irrevocably the sort of story that's being done. Because if you made it, like, Bloodborne Cyberpunk or something, I don't know what that would be. Like, it would probably have lost some of the identity. Unless it was, like, the future, but everyone's still dressing like this and fighting with swords. I don't know. But, see, so, yeah, I don't actually want Bloodborne 2, but, like... Um, continuing the, like, Demon Souls through to Bloodborne through to something else would be neat. Um, I don't know, though. Okay, I think that's probably... I've still got Elden Ring menu brain. There we go. Okay, so, that'll be it for now. Um, I'm still here. So, what I might do is... Might actually just close that down. Turn that off. And what I might actually do is, um... Let's fix my monitors up for a second. I guess, like, um... I hate to bring it up, but Lies of P is sort of doing the, like, Belle Epoque thing. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is... I am going to change the window capture to... Because the reason that we do this is to talk about Bloodborne wikis, so let's change the window capture to 
the Bloodborne wiki and bring it back. And it's way too big. There we go. Oh yeah, no, well, th thank you, Derek. Well, this will be archived, like you'll be able to watch it later on. So here's the Bloodborne wiki. This is what we're like, um, me and Altair do this every year. The reason that we make a point of streaming with the donation link is that that donation link is what's keeping Bloodborne Wiki afloat. So for people who don't know, um, like about Bloodborne Wiki, like this is not, um, it's not like a fandom or a fextra wiki that has been put together that way. It's written entirely like in notepad. It's all bespoke and it's all by math. And, um, it's extremely, extremely in depth. Um, quite a few of the longer things are like written by me. Um, and like there's like some uh, like move showcases and stuff that are written by people from Tomb Prospectors. So it's like basically pooling together everyone who knows like all the ins and outs of this to put together this thing. So. I'll show you an example of what we have here. Like, I brought up there's a press kit. You stopped asking for games after Star Fox Zero mood. It's like this, for example, this is the Bloodborne press kit that they released, uh, like obviously as a press thing. And um, because it's a press thing, like you can't just, you can't just buy this. Like you have to have actually been given it. So it was very, very hard to track this down. This is actually scans of Lance McDonald's copy that I physically picked up from his house and <laughs> scanned, uh, which involved an 11 hour round trip because he lives on the other side of the state. And um, you can see like, this is, this is artwork. Like, I don't think this is in the book in this form. You can see like, um, oh, I can't zoom in properly, but like, Maybe I can if I do this. Oh, I can't. Okay. Yeah. Um. Like that image. Like that image is there, but I think this has like details that aren't in that one, and it has like this little inscription here. I think that says um. It's like, faithful be thy victory or something. It's like a it's a, a um, a plaque that's outside a building in Oxford. So you can tell they're referencing stuff like that. You can see like um. Uh, we go in here like there's like um that's like unused bergenworth i think or unused yosefka's clinic and there's like guns like some of those guns aren't in the game. there's actually very few firearms in bloodborne and you can see that like this is sort of ones they didn't use i think the german's gun is in there somewhere this is interesting get little image of um Ibriotis, and to scale with her is a celestial emissary and they don't really interact in game so it's interesting, like, they pick that as the scale thing, almost like, at this point she would have been Cos, like, Cos would have had the little emissaries around Cos. And, like, I think a lot of this is, oh, okay, here, this is really interesting, that's some, um, that's Simon. That is Simon. And he is here in this, this art book that came out with, with, like, before the DLC came out. Like, Simon was like that that character was in there. He's called like um Beggar Hunter. Like they they had him conceived and they didn't use him in the base game, but they did use him in the DLC. And that's why like we were talking about what might be an Elden Ring. Uh Elden Ring Shadow of the Erd Tree and people were like, "Well, if it was cut from the game, they cut it for a reason." So, of course, blah blah blah. But it's like Pretty much everything that ends up in the DLCs of these games is stuff that they did cut from the base game in order to use later on. It's like there's like there's Simon. That's like old old Simon. Um, this is like renders. Not much interesting in here. Why isn't this updating? Hurry up. That's interesting. You can see like they they sort of show how like the anatomy of the rat works. Um, these are just uh, those are all just promo shots. We saw them in magazines. Nothing new here. Um, that's interesting. They use a different hunter model for some of these. They don't have the cap on. They have a bare head. And I think, oh no, that one. Some of them, I think you might be able to see the, um, that, that dude's interesting. That's the hunter's dream. Um, that is like, that's the fireplace sort of, no, that's the fireplace. That's where the memory altar is. 
and that chair there is like presumably where you would have warped in and out. And you can see there's this character here and therein, um, that's the chard set with Dura's cap. Which, like, the chard set and Dura's cap were originally the one set, so you can see, like, it gives this idea, like, the hunter, I guess, like, you're going back and forth from, from that workshop using a warp chair. Um, I don't know if this picture of Amelia shows up in any of the official art, but it's pretty cool, like, an Amelia with the pendant. This book, by the way, like, this is scans I did and is fell to pieces. Um, because it's, like, a press kit from eight years ago. There it is. It's actually quite, it looks quite nice. Like, it's this big, like, cardboard, uh, book. You open it up and there's, like, the, the art book and the, there's, like, a CD that goes, like, it's, like, leather and everything. Um, but, like, because it's a press kit from eight years ago, like, it's just held together with this incredibly shitty glue. So, like, the second you open the pages, they just come out. And that was fine, because, like, he's got another one that's in decent condition, but, um, yeah, having to go through, like, just this book that's falling to pieces and scan it. What else is there? Oh, okay, there's an interesting little symbol. I'm gonna cheat, because I don't know how to zoom in properly without it changing. Let's just take that. Um, can I change you to... Please. Nothing to... No. Don't like me. Whatever. Hang on, we'll do this. We can make this work. I promise I can make this work. Now if we do win properties. There we go. There we go. This. This little symbol is at the the bottom of the final page and um i have no idea what it's supposed to be you can see we can draw on it i like drawing on things on stream you can see like it's kind of like the hunter's mark like it's sort of we'll use a thicker pen um you can see here like it's kind of the hunter's mark like it like th it's in there but then, like, it's also got this, and it just becomes the brand of sacrifice from Berserk. But, like, that's really neat. And I don't know what it is, and there's all this obvious, like, moon design. So I've, I've never seen this anywhere else. It's, like, some sort of rune. But, like, it's sort of also, it's too ornate a design to just be a carol rune. Because car if it was a carol rune, it would probably just be like this. It would just be like that. But it's not. It's like very, very nice with these. Actually, it almost looks like the wand from from Derasine. But yeah, um, let's go back to the wiki. Okay. So this is the sort of stuff that like um, Bloodborne Wiki is for. It's for this sort of um, like level of like archival and um like testing work this might actually have oh here we go here we go so these um this is this is again like more of the stuff that that we do here like this is actually me i made these gifts and this is my character um this was to settle questions about the the frames of the the, the firearms like there was this big thing about like does Evelyn fire faster than the other pistols like what how long do certain things take to reload so um I spent the afternoon in Moonside Lake recreating the exact same thing using um like uh, copying it and then cutting it up into these little animated gifs oh my god you donated 50 bucks thank you so much that's so good yeah Thank you, Derek. Yeah. So yeah, um, this is the sort of work that we do. This was just to settle, like, okay, all the pistols fire on the tenth frame, <laughs> and they all go for sixty frames. Like, um, all the <laughs> all the rifles fire on the twelfth frame, and the like the blunderbuss and the piercing rifle take sixty frames. Ludwig's take sixty five. Like, it's this sort of level of like making sure everything works. I think um, uh, Lilith mentioned she used the wiki to get like information on 
like iframes and stuff to make them accurate. So I think she may actually have used that. So if she did, like I guess part of my DNA is now in that PS1 Bloodborne game. What else do we have here? Exhibition. This is what I was talking about with Altair earlier. So this is, there was this um, exhibition about game development at the Victoria and Albert Museum. And some friends of ours who we've actually, we've had both of them on before. It was um, Astral Lace and Vodka Folly. They went there and these are their photographs. These are their photographs. Um, so they just went there with their phones and they just photographed everything in detail and sent me a gigantic RAW file. So this is a write-up of everything that was at the exhibition. It includes this concept art that's like we've never seen before. There's some really interesting stuff in here. Like this is the doll. Um, and like we got someone, this is, it's obviously it's uh, Fromm's like notes. So they're all written in Japanese. We got someone to translate them. And that apparently says like evil spirit slash governess. Oh no, no, that's, no, that's like... Yeah, it's like evil spirit slash governess slash vampire or something like that. You can see here, like, that's a another version of the choir garb, um, where, like, it's obviously designed for someone who's a lot more meant to be, like, a highwayman. They have that, like, like highwayman look of, like, they're going to ambush you in the forest before it became the sort of scholarly look, and they've got, like, the repeating... I think that's the repeating pistol that they've got. We've got, like, Art of the Kirkhammer. Yeah, and, like, none of this is in any of the art books. That's why, like, we had to kind of, like, do it this way. And as it goes down, um, you get... This is the stuff we were talking about. You get the old maps. It's, like, this is, like, an in-development map of the game. And you can see it's, like, an early one, but you can kind of figure out, okay, like, down here. There's, like, the big bridge in front of the clock. There's the clock. That is, um, that might actually be, like, the old idea of the castle. That might be Bergenworth. Um, I showed this off, like, there's, like, a low, you can actually extract a low-poly version of this from the game and run around in it, and I actually did that for Return to Yarnum 2021. Um, like, that area, where is it, there, is, like, a big sort of foundry that's, like, something they don't use in the game anymore. It's, like, if you think about, sort of, Victorian imagery, like one of the things you'd think of would be like the dark satanic mill, or like a big smokestack or something. They don't do anything like that, but it looks like they were, they were planning to. It's like a big sort of like foundry with these big like chimneys that's just not not in the game anymore. Like there's not even a new version of it. Um, like this is that you might recognize like this look. Um, if you've seen any of like Lance's sort of like old uh recovered stuff things where like it's just the basic geometry with this repeating wooden texture on it and there's like a whole build of the game that's this that like we will never get a chance to look at because people will lose their jobs over it um like here's like the cleric beast score this recording of cleric beast it gets super interesting if we go down because there's even more maps aha here we go so this this is this is the mother load So this might not look like much because like it's quite small, but that image we're looking at now is the um the the game like in development at a certain point. Uh, I wonder if there's a better one because that's the annotated one. Uh, okay, we don't have it anymore. I know where it's gone, but basically like. That is... you may have replaced it with the annotated one. Yeah, okay. So this this here is... this is the whole of Yarnum. You can't really see because it's so small. This is literally an A4 piece of paper, so you can imagine how low res it is. Um, but you can kind of make out, looking from the top, okay, like, that's Kanehurst, that's Bergenworth, that's the Grand Cathedral. Um, and what I did was... I, I like... oh, here it is, yeah. I upscaled it. And I was able to, like, identify what all the little buildings on it were. And this is, like, we were talking about Bergenworth. So this thing here, that's Bergenworth. So you can see that building A... Building A is where, like, that's the Bergenworth we explore in-game. And you can see, like, the little fence around it matches where the fence in Bergenworth is. This is all alike now, but this is how it used to be. 
that is the Bergenworth that we know now. So like Willem is out there, the lake is out there. That's the research, sorry, lecture hall. That's the lecture hall. And you can see like it has the dome. That dome would have been like, that's the, that's the observatory dome. And that's where that like circular room is now. That used to be there and they moved it to there. And um, you can also see like this isn't symmetrical off to the sides, but the current one is, and it looks like what they did was they just mirrored part of it and cut this part out entirely. Uh, I don't know if Sin is in the chat because I can't tell. Because like Sin and I technically we're both logged in at the same time. We're both logged in as Sinclair Law. I have to log in as her to stream. Um, Sin, like, it would be midnight where she is, so she might actually just be asleep right now. But yeah, this is this is Bergenworth. And this is the area we're talking about that's like, we don't know what this was. Like, clearly that's not there. But if you look at the Grand Cathedral, you can see that, like, there's no Altar of Despair. Like, if there was an Altar of Despair, it would be out the back, but it's not. And what we're fairly sure happened is that that's the Altar of Despair. It's this, like, underground cave system that was originally under Bergenworth. And when they cut it out, like, half of it turned into the Altar of Despair, and the other half became the caves that are under Bergenworth. Under Yosefka's clinic, sorry. So that's presumably what happened to that, and I don't have it anymore because I'm just, like, looking at a um, web browser. But basically, um, if you line up the collision of the Altar of Despair, it lines up exactly with the back of that room. Um, they basically, they stretched it slightly, but it does does actually line up with that. Um, but yeah, we're not sure what, what this was, because, like, it, it's presumably a cave system, but then it's also very, very, like, it's very, sort of, regular. So I don't know if, like, maybe it was, like, an artificial tunnel that led to a cave system, like, you pop down there and went there. Um, I'm trying to think of what else we have. Uh... We have, for instance, a... We have this page that's literally just documenting every difference between version 1, uh, version 1.0, which is the version that, that comes on disk, and then the patched version, just like listing everything that changed. Um, every little glitch, every, like you can see, like amygdala sticks through the floor. Um, you have a lot of different lighting effects being used. You can, this is interesting, you can, um, Visceral, the bloodletting beast's head, even though it's not there anymore. Because the way that they do this is that they just um, make the bloodletting beast's head invisible, but they didn't, they forgot to remove the collision and stuff in 1.0, so you can still, it still acts like the head is there. Um, yeah, there's like amygdala can like fall through the floor and stuff. Um, this is all me. <laughs> this is all me. Um, like, obsessively sticking with 1.0. I was on 1.0 for like a year and couldn't do online. Um, this is like a little like glitch you can do in Kanehurst. I showed this off live like a couple of years ago. I can't do it now because I'm back on 1.09. But yeah, there's like the, um, there's like misaligned clipping in Kanehurst where you can just like stand in midair. Uh, yeah, it's also like all little, little different like UI changes. Oh, and it's Mikolash. This is um, back before they fixed Nicolash's teleport, so instead of popping out of the mirror, he appears above the mirror and slides down the wall. And just keeps doing this forever. Oh yeah, yeah, the, um, the, the, inv it is an invisible statue, what's happening in, in, uh, in Kanehurst. There is actually, like, it's just that there, there was a statue there, and they've moved it, but they didn't, they moved the graphic, but not the collision. The same thing actually happens in the clinic. Um, which, like, you've probably seen it, like, many, many times and just never noticed it's happening because the floor is a mess. But, like, there's part of the floor of the clinic where you, your feet just go up and you, like, levitate for a little bit. Because there, there was, like, assets there and they, they moved the, the graphical asset but not the clipping. There's, like, so much just, like, weird stuff. You know, like, the, the, um, Winter Lantern's little frenzy spears, like, they just float in midair instead of sticking to you. There's all this. And there's, like, every single rewritten item description. Um, version comparison. I forget which version I actually compared. 
here we are. This is also like, if you want to get really deep into like stuff that changed. So this is, this, I remember this took me, um, took me an entire long weekend of doing nothing but this. So you'll notice that the, the blue character, like that's the character Lance used to always use. So what Lance did was he streamed, um, version, uh, like a pre-release version that was shown off at the Tokyo Game Show. So like Lance is on the left and I'm on the right. And what happened was... I just watched Lance's whole video and I went frame by frame and recreated every single thing that he did. So you can see every single difference between the the Tokyo Game Show 2014 build and the build we have now. He's like like the warp chair is there. Um the items have obviously changed. I don't know how much is like super significant. Um Oh yeah, the foul-smelling pill, if anyone remembers that. That's, that was like a gradual health restore item that they ended up not using, but it was, it was like in the demos. Uh, people did actually play and use it, because they played like old demos of the game before it was officially released. And it's just like, the, the, the shortcuts are like cut off because they didn't want you exploring too far because it was a demo. It's like, there's like the amygdala in the, um, in Yarnum, which you don't get anymore. I don't think if there's anything else that's particularly notable. Uh, oh yeah, there's the old gas coin. So you can see like, um, this was a thing they almost went with, which is that instead of using the bell to just like Dark Souls style summon someone going whoop out of the ground, um, the NPC hunters would just be walking around. And like you would just encounter them and they would just form a little group with you so like Gascoin was just on the bridge he wasn't summoned with a bell he was just beyond the bridge and you'd encounter him and you the two of you would just run off and fight the cleric beast together um but they ended up having to scale it back to the like the um the the bell system and there's like the, the, uh, that that was that was a video corruption error we couldn't do anything about it um the closest that that you get in the base game is when Eileen shows up to fight Henrik. It's like, you'll go down and, like, Henrik's there, and you fight Henrik, and then Eileen just runs in. That's what they wanted for, like, all the NPC hunters, but it only works with Eileen in that one case. The rest have to be belts. Um, and there's also this dialogue for Alfred doing that, which he never does, like, at all in the game, but this dialogue where Alfred is, like, it's, I don't know what the context is, but it's, like, Alfred showing, going, oh, looks like you could use some help, and he, like, charges in. Um, that's like, I don't know what that was for, presumably for Bloodstarved Beast, but, you know. I mean, it's kind of like in Demon Souls when you go to fight Penetrator, and like, if you've rescued Bior, Bior's just in the arena, he's not a summon. That's what they were trying to do. And yeah, it didn't, didn't quite work out. That's the, um, the Garden of Eyes that I, I suspect, like, there's probably only one Garden of Eyes to begin with, and it was supposed to be Yosefka. But like, because that's why it's wearing, like, the white robes of the Healing Church. It was supposed to be, like... It'd be like one, you'd go back and like Yosefka has ascended into being this thing. And now they're just all over Bergen West for some reason. Um, Ellie, here's what I was talking about with like the initial sort of escape sequence. Like you would have to go across. I don't know if Lance showed it off because I think it's not. I don't know if it's in there, but basically like you, you'd have to escape from the clinic through quite a circuitous route. Rather than just walking out the front. It was, it was kind of like um, escaping from the asylum in Dark Souls. And it's like, it would have been interesting, but I'm glad they got rid of it. Because uh, it just, I think, like, the game as it is now, like, it has quite a fast pace. And that would have, like, slowed it down at the start. Unless you could do it quickly. Um, I'm trying to think of what else we have. Oh yeah, that's Old Erden Chapel. So you can see, like, um, this is after fighting gas coins, like, Lance left me, right? You can see, like, instead of it being that, um, that, like, the sort of watery sewer area with the ladder, um, you actually go up, like, a series, it's just this continuous spiral staircase that leads up. And, um, the, like, I've seen this video, it doesn't actually end properly, like, it, there's just, like, a void at the end of this, but there's, like, a whole, like, different way to get into Erden Chapel. And a lot of, like, ways around the game look like they got cut because of loading issues. 
like the whole thing about like a ladder is like you can't climb ladders very quickly so like if they shove a ladder in it gives you more time to like load the following area it's also why the door behind the cleric beast won't open uh because they're just trying to stop like the areas getting confused as they're loading anyway and there's like this is Lancy just showing off like the the day lighting that does exist um it's only used in that ending when you're like when you do the the wake up ending at Shodhyana during the day but like there's a fully functional day or like the it's weird because like it's the day but they've left all the lights on but yeah like that that was the system um and they don't do anything what else can we show off I'm just here it's just like it's like quarter past three in the afternoon on Saturday I'm not doing anything may as well just keep going uh what else am I looking for um let's try trailer comparison here we are like this is again this is the same thing this is something i did um where i went through and i recreated all of the shots from the 2014 trailers in the game to show off the differences and like again it's not massive but you can see like the for people who don't remember like the 2014 bloodborne trailer henwick happens during the day because like the get it would start like at the day and it would go through the night, but like right now it starts in the evening, but like Hemwick you can see here, it's just the daytime. Like you're just running around during, it's like a misty sort of crispy morning in Hemwick. And now the earliest you can get there is that. You can see like, uh, if you go back a little bit, you know, like it's, it's this sort of like, that's kind of like what the weather is like where I live. It's this sort of like, sort of misty, crisp place. Um, there's also like Amelia in the witch's room. Which is something that, like, we weren't sure about for the longest time, because we had a suspicion she was supposed to be there, but we weren't sure if this image was, like, if they made this image just that was the assets they had, so they just shoved a boss in a room to have something to show off. But, like, no, as far as we're concerned now, like, um, she absolutely was, like, the boss of that area of Hemwick at some point. Um, we found, like, assets for her within Hemwick. Like, it's not, like, we have more to go off than just the image. Um, oh, here we go. Here's, like, the... This is the old, like, it's a very Tower of Latria lighting. Like, it has this, like, that sort of jaundiced look to it. Everything is sort of yellowy green. And, like, this is sort of, like, when you talk about it being a Demon Soul success, like, this just straight up looks like it's part of Tower of Latria. And then they change it to this, like, much more, like, somber, I guess, area. And, um... Again, like here's like, you know, you can see like the difference. It's a pretty massive difference. They do actually still use this lighting in one place, and it's after you beat Ludwig. And there's that little tiny corridor that goes uh, to the, the research hall. That is the one place they reuse this, and you get the weird like green lighting. Yeah, it's never used again. Um, also interesting, that's like, that's one of the chalice enemies. A lot of people don't know because people either don't do the chalices and don't go that deep into them, but like, that's, um, it's an enemy called Lauren Cleric. They're like a beast guy in a white robe that shoots fireballs out of a staff. And you can see here, like, they're positioned sniping at you as you're climbing the stairs. And if you look in the data, there's a ton of these guys. Like, they just, they had them in all these areas and then they removed them to make the, um, the... To just put them in the chalices. Um, oh yeah, 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 the slug candles in in um, the fishing hamlet also have that look to them. But I mean, like in in like the Yarnum areas, like the sort of like the stone and the the green lighting and everything is extremely Latria. Anyway, these guys I'm pretty sure were supposed to be transformed um, healing church people initially because they have the same like white gold robes on that the Garden of Eyes have. And, uh, yeah, I think they were, like, they were going to be in, like, the cathedral and places, and then they, they made them a specifically a Warren thing, which is interesting. Um, da -ba -da -ba -da. Oh, yeah, lot, lots of fog. That's how much fog the 2015 build has. 2014 build has. Um, they did, it's, it's still pretty foggy, but it's not, not that foggy. Um... This is interesting also, like, this bell. So, this bell is still in the game. Um, you can see here I found one. It's just, like, an asset on some buildings. But you can see here, it's, like, it's on a statue that's roughly level with, like, the player. And, um, something that we found 
is that the Thumerian church servants, like the ones with the bells around their necks, they have an unused animation where they grab the bell and they ring it. And they also have, like, it seems like they would react to the bells ringing. So I'm wondering if, like, there was some plan early on that, like, as you went around Cathedral Ward, if you rang those bells, the church servants would go toward where the bell was and leave you alone. Because that's how the bells work in the Chalice Dungeon. So there'll be, like, these bells, and you ring them, and all the enemies in the Chalice head toward that room. Which is, like, a weird thing to have in the Chalices. But if you think about it, like, you're sneaking around a city, it almost makes sense. Because if there's, like, a bunch of, like, church servants and hunters and things, like on the stairs and then you rang that they would maybe leave the stairs and it becomes more like a stealth survival horror thing but as it is now you just run through and kill everything like the the sort of stealth elements seem to have been removed oh yeah this is this is interesting this is the like um this is the intro of the game obviously but you can see like it's actually using an older layout of yarnum and it's this one you can tell like if you sort of like triangulate everything it's slightly in different positions um, there's the old statue that's actually, that's in Old Yarnum. It's where the lantern is now. There were these, the statues are pretty well known at this point. There were these, like, statues. You see them in the chalices. Um, they're by the doors and they're by, like, the, um, there's one in the Hunter's Dream as well. And, like, you would, you had to think it was called the, was it, like, the Soul Spike? The Soul Stake? I think it's called the Soul Stake. You would use something called the soul stake to, like, jam it into the base of the statue, and that's when it would turn into a warp. And when you did that, you'd get an... I don't have a picture of it at the moment, but you'd get an on-screen text thing that said, like, the spirit was linked. And that would make it into a warp. I don't know how exactly. Um, I don't know what you would do to interact with them as a warp, like, because obviously you can't sit in it. Maybe you just pray by it or something. I don't know. Um... And then, yeah, there's this, like, it's, like, old, old Yarnum before, I guess, it got overgrown in between 2014 and now. Yeah, there's, like, just different, like, placements of oil things. Um, so, yeah, that's sort of what we're getting at here, like, the reason we do this is because all this stuff, like, you can see there's no ads anywhere on this website. Um, it's all controlled by one person it's all written by one person as in like the code is all written by one person um the way that like articles get submitted is that you just send Miff the raw text and the raw images and she lays it all out for you so this is all like all kind of done by her and like she like is not making any money off this she's operating this thing at a loss um she does it because she cares about the community and um, you know, it's like, you can see there's a lot of very, very in-depth information here that you don't get anywhere else. And, um, yeah, um, if, I'll put it up again if we just go. This is her Buy Me A Coffee page. So if anyone wants to just, like, drop by and give math, like, five bucks... They'd be really appreciated because it just helps cover hosting costs. Also, the fact that, like, in order for her to to do this, like, it's a huge amount of time for her. So, like, she often spends a lot of time, like, not sleeping because she has, like, work and stuff to just make sure the wiki is running correctly. Um, so, like, any sort of support, like, is really, really useful. I think she has pictures of her Demon Souls collection here. Um, here we go. F is also a Demon Souls collector. Um, I'm not sure if this is still accurate to her collection, but, like, um, she collects copies, like, physical copies of uh, Demon's Souls PS3, and uh, quite a few of these actually came from me, because um, Mef lives in Czechia, and Czechia has quite high import taxes, so a lot of businesses won't, um, won't allow people in Czechia to buy stuff from them. So we ended up with this system where, like, I was buying stuff on her behalf in Australia, and then, like, I would buy it, like, she'd give me the money, I'd buy it, and then I'd, like, post it to her. So a lot of, I, I don't know which ones exactly, but, like, think about, oh, like, seven or eight of these <laughs> passed through my hands to get to her. And, um, 
you know, like, she's just, she's extremely dedicated and she is also very, very shy and uh, not good at, like, promoting herself. Um, she just sort of wants to be, like, you know, just someone who runs this stuff and keeps it all chugging along and she's not a very public person, so we try to do this every, just to get the word out that, like, this is, this is how to support this stuff. Because, like I said, she's not making... Uh, she doesn't have a Patreon. She doesn't have like uh, you know any side or anything. Uh, I'm not sure if one more interesting I go. There. He is. Oh, okay. Who's the, the the Velka of Bloodborne is absolutely Erden. Um, which I find deeply irritating because I think the Erden thing is quite. I found my I found my play badge. It's here. Um, the Erden thing is like I think it's extremely straightforward that <laughs> Erden's just like there is a nameless formless thing called Erden it is localized around a chapel if you have Canehurst blood and a functional uterus and you go to the chapel Erden gets in your blood and you have an Erden baby so I feel like that's not that complicated whereas like Velka specifically is like She's like a detail of the world. Like, Velka's a thing that exists, but, like, what relevance Velka has to the actual plot is, like, question mark. And the Glomite... Like, cards on the table, Sin and I have recorded about the Glomite Queen. It's not out yet. But, um, Glomite Queen is, like... I think the Glomite Queen is... It's not a case of it being, like, overly complicated. As much as it is, like, you're given information about her, and it feels like it's half half the story and it feels like something they want to follow up on like what the deal with her actually was yeah that's what i wanted to show off i can't zoom in any further so i'm gonna have to do this in paint again this was staring us in the face for like literally because it was in a book we had for a really really long time and we only noticed it recently. Do you see it yet? The entire time that the art book has been out. The hunter in Kanehurst has had a prosthetic leg. And um we we didn't notice. <laughs> we didn't notice. And this is really interesting because like it's the player hunter. This isn't like a boss that had a prosthetic leg. Like the little little hunter asset that they pop on all the pages had an option for a prosthetic leg at some point. Yeah, it was there. Okay. We'll quickly go into like Melon is the Glomide Queen, because why the fuck? Oh, right. Okay, so. Um, Melon being the Glomide Queen, this is now turned into an Elden Ring discussion, I'm sorry. So. Um, we'll, hang on, we'll try to find out. Melon, a frenzy to find Basically, in the Frenzied Flame ending, uh, Melina gets this, like, goth makeover. Hang on. Let me make you bigger. Right. So that's what Melina looks like in the Frenzied Flame ending. Um, she, she gets this, like, her hair goes black. Kind of like mine. Um, her hair goes black, and then the eye that's been sealed the whole game opens. So her eyes change. So like the eye that was sealed all game opens up and it's that like very unearthly blue violet. 
which is associated with the beast eye that Garank has. Because Garank's whole deal is like, I'll give you the beast eye, it's glowing this like off sort of blue violet color and it's linked to seeing death. Her golden eye disappears and it goes dull. And you get this. Right, so she's got, like, the sealed eye is open. It looks like the beast eye. It's got the three claw marks over it. There's other things, too. Yeah, I'm just going over, like, this is the main one. It's got the the three claw... Although, the, weirdly, the claw looks like a tattoo more than, like, it was actually clawed. Um, and when she's like this, she says, I am going to bring you destined death. So that's, like, the major one. Um, there's a lot of little hints throughout the game that, like, Melina and the Glomide Queen are connected. Um, but this is like sort of this feels like the reveal now I don't think like it's as basic as saying that you can see like there like she's got the very very like uh, rich gold in the eye and she's got like that now that's people compare that to Garank having the three the three claw marks across like the claw mark seal and the beast eye they both have three it's like a claw has raked across them the problem like it, it clearly looks like it's a three clawed hand but um it's I, that's not a claw mark that's like a tattoo like it's a drawing of a three clawed hand so but i still think it was probably sealed by garank it's just that it's been done with this this tattoo thing rather than like an actual clawing um anyway and like she has a very rich golden eye and then when she becomes like that ending character the gold drains from her and she opens up and she gets like the the sort of the the glowing eye instead um that's like the major thing now i don't think it's literally supposed to be like issues again you can see also like she's wearing i don't know if that's the lighting or she actually is wearing black now but you can see like her hair is definitely turned black what's it doing pause better look at it like her hair has definitely gone black Anyway, so um, I don't think it's literally that Melina is the Glomide Queen. I think that they're connected because even taking all this into account, like, firstly, like, Melina doesn't behave like the Glomide Queen should behave. But the other thing is, like, um, oh no, the cloak is the same, but the hair is black. Like, she has, Melina's got this, like, strawberry blonde hair. And then in that ending, her hair has gone black, and that's, like, very similar to what happens to Radagon and Marika, where it's, like, Marika with the blonde hair falls, and then the blonde hair transforms into the red hair of Radigan. So what I'm thinking is, like, it's probably something like that, because Elden Ring is all about, like, having, like, fractured characters who are, like, two characters that are one character and everyone is, like, fusing together and breaking apart again. I think it's something like that. Like, she... She's, like, a fragment of the Glomide Queen, or, like, she's someone else and the Glomide Queen got combined into one person. It, it's something like that. Also, yeah, Akron is pointing out, like, it's, like, um, the Millennia clones born from the, the Ionian buds, because, like, all those, um, the red-haired people, like, Millicent, and then you meet the others, like, Pollyanna and someone else, blah, blah, blah. Um, they all, like, popped into being as a result of Melina, like, not Melina, Millennia budding, because Melania's got the, like, the, the Scarlet Rot sort of, like, fungus plant thing going on. They, like, popped into, they're like orcs from Warhammer 40,000, they just popped. And, um, it may be that, that, like, when the Glomide Queen was destroyed by Malekith, it actually doesn't say she was destroyed, just as she was defeated. But, like, whenever she was, like, defeated, like, she was broken into pieces or like she was reincarnated or like she fused with someone else to become melina but like it's clear that like there is some sort of connection um but like i don't think it's literally just oh the glomide queen changed her name to melina because like she doesn't act like she is like the glomide queen led a group of people who were out to murder the gods and make their skin into suits and that's not something Melina seems that interested in doing. Like, the Glowmine Queen seems like she was very sort of, like, somewhere between, like, depending on how you interpret her behavior. Um, she was either just incredibly sadistically cruel, or she was trying to accomplish something that 
involved, like, doing horrible things to you, was just sort of detached and immoral about it. Whereas that doesn't sound like anything Melanie would do. So, um, that's, like, the... Con- we're, we're recording something about this um, that, like, will be out soonish. We will go into that. That's, um, yeah. Anyway, I think I don't know how we ended up talking about Elden Ring. I'm very sorry. Okay, that's the other thing. Akron just points to we're back. Sorry, Elden. The, the, it specifically says right. This is the thing about the Glowy Mine Queen that I think is is missed when talking about her, which is that Glowy Mine Queen's an Empyrean. We talked about the word Empyrean not making any sense, but um, the word Empyrean, like the simplest explanation of it, is that it means next in line to the throne, which means the Glowy Mine Queen was. Almost certainly she's one of Marika's kids. And it also says that Destined Death was stolen by Malekith from the Glomide Queen. But it also says that um, Marika creates the Golden Order by confining Destined Death. So that means the actual chain of events is Marika creates the Golden Order by ripping Destined Death out of the Elden Ring and giving it to the Glomide Queen. And then Malekith gets it from her. So there is this period in history where Marika's kid has the rune of death um, and is sealing it away. And then she goes rogue and Malika has to get it back from her. And it's very similar to the, um, the nameless king in Dark Souls, where like there's this person who was like going to inherit the throne and then they went bad. And as a result, they were exiled and struck from history. And I think that's why they just call her the gloom eyed queen because her actual name has been removed. And it also, like, is interesting to compare with Godwin, because, like, Marika seems fucking obsessed with Godwin. Um, that, like, she seems to shower everything upon Godwin, and no one else really matters because she's got Godwin. It's like, it's like Prince Harry. It's like we've got the heir and we've got the spare. That seems to be how she's treating everyone. So I feel like probably what happened is... She had this other kid, probably, they may even have been twins, where she's like, okay, your brother is the one who's going to ascend to the throne, and your whole purpose, all you have to do, is you're just here to keep your brother alive by sealing Destined Death away. So I'm just going to shove Destined Death in you, and I know you can just go and, like, live as an exile somewhere, and literally you're just, you're just, like, there to stop your brother dying. I, that seems to be where it was going. And I think, like, in that situation, there's sort of, like, two choices where either the whole god-skinning thing is literally just she is so completely twisted by revenge at this point because she's been denied everything to keep her brother alive. So she, like, becomes, like, I'm going to kill all of you in the most painful way possible. But the other way is, like, it may not necessarily have been a 100% cruelty thing that she's skinning them, because it likens the skinning to the Crucible. Like, it talks about, like, the god skins are putting all this, like, inhuman anatomy in themselves, and it's very close to what happened with the Crucible. So it could also be that, like, she's killing them and skinning them, but she's doing it for, like, there's a reason why. It's like Godric and the grafting. Like, she's trying to get bits and pieces of, like, the gods, I don't know, like, the, the innate power of them or like their sort of um just their strength or something like that and put it into her own children because it also says like she she cradles the like the newborn apostles like she's trying to make herself like another version of marica and make her own crucible and have her own children so like that sort of that's i think a more interesting way of looking at it than just being like she was mean Anyway. Um, I guess the other thing to point out, like, um, little asterisk, the Godskin Apostles were originally very clearly supposed to be Rikard's faction, and um, then they switched everything around. And they had nothing to do with Destined Death, and they just threw flames at you, and the skin was to do with snake skin. But that's not, that's not how they do it anymore. Oh, okay, so I'll, I'll go after I answer this question about Melina. So, the thing about Melina is when you meet her, she has amnesia. Like, it's quite, like, explicit. Like, she says that her purpose is lost to her, 
And what she wants you to do is she wants you to take her to the Erd tree and then she'll remember what her purpose is. So she's tagging along with you to get to Landell. And then what happens is when you get to Landell, she leaves. But then she comes back again after the Morgoth fight. And when she comes back in after the Morgoth fight, she says that she went and she got her, basically she got her memory back. It doesn't say memory, it says um, purpose. It's like she got her purpose back and she like remembered why she was here, what she was trying to do. And um, that's the point at which she's like, okay, we're going to burn the earth tree down. And she starts talking about destined death. So, like, Melina's purpose for, like, the first half of, like, the pre Dell half is just to get to Dell, And then after Dell, it becomes about, like, we have to burn the Erd tree. She's presumably, it's confusing because, like, she can also leave. But, like, I think she's what sends you to Farah Missoula. Um, even though you can go there anyway. But, like, I feel like she's probably the reason you end up there because she wants you to, like she must know about destined death. Like, she talks about destined death as if she knows quite a lot about it. And I think she's sending you there to unbind it. Yeah, I, th I think she was she was definitely... Sac like, bleh. Another thing to talk about with Langdell is, like, the lower part of Langdell is completely blanketed in ash and all the trees are burned. And it's like, yeah, there's a giant fucking dragon that's impaled on a building. Like, that probably did some of the damage. But the focus on all of the ash... And the fact that the trees have burned. And they're like in places that are nowhere near the dragon. Like that to me is like. they And we, we've we also got an episode about this. That's not out yet. But like very obviously like. In the time of the old round table. Um, they were burning people to try to burn the Erd tree down. That's what happened. That's why Bernal ended up turning against the Golden Order. And it's, like, presumably what Vike was on the way to do before he snapped. So there's, like, all this, like, they've tried burning it down before and it's never worked. And it's, ne it's not worked because they don't have the Rune of Death unbound. Because if the Rune of Death is still bound inside Malekith, the tree just burns, but it stays there. Whereas if you have the Rune of Death, you can actually burn all the way through the thorns and get inside. And I think that's what's going on. Like, Melon is like, okay, if we go to Faram Azula and unbind the Rune, then we can burn it properly. I think that's what she's doing in that ending. And yeah, it, it doesn't make sense that you can also just go there from the Frenzied Flame, and I don't know why. I mean, the Frenzied Flame presumably has its own reason to want to take you to, to Faramazula. Like, the Frenzied Flame is an outer god. It presumably knows where Faramazula is. I don't know if Marika... It's confusing, because, like... Marika, the Fingers, the Greater Will, and the Erd Tree are all technically, like, at loggerheads. Like, the, the way that I, I liken, the way that I explained it when I was talking to Sin about it is, like... Oh, the, the Erd Tree apparition is, like, I can't show it up next I'm not playing the game, but, like, the Erd Tree, um, it appears to be transparent from some angles... And there's this whole thing about, like, is that supposed to be like that? And, like, I'm gonna say I think it's just an issue with how the material is handling light. Because, like, something that I, I looked into this, and basically what you can do is, um, if you just pull out the telescope and you look at the Erd tree, it'll snap back to being solid again. And then when you move back, it'll go back to being um, transparent again. And I think it's literally just, like... That's, like, the glow effect is doing, like, it's still be to do with how the material that the Erd tree is made of is reacting to light. But, like, for some kinds of light are making it transparent. Yeah, it's transparent, but I don't think it's, like, supposed to be transparent. Like, when you get up to it, like, it's clearly there, and, like, in the... Actually, with the Frenzy Flame thing, we can look at it here. Um, like, that's the Erd tree. Like, when you, when you let the Frenzied Flame out, it burns the Erd Tree from inside. So like, it's clearly a physical object. Oh, and I think, I think the discolored part of the Erd Tree is from them trying to get... I think it is from them burning it. Like, they tried to burn it down the first time, and it just has never worked out. Um, but I think we'll probably figure out, like... 
I'm sure, like, we'll probably get some sort of, like, opaque answer. Anyway. Um... I'm trying to- yeah, I don't know. Because, like, we only interact with the tiny part of the tree, but, like... I honestly think a lot of the Erd tree is an illusion thing is, um... It's that material error that happens. But there's also, like, there's the phantom trees outside of it where you can clearly see that, like... Um... There are these, like, illusory sort of Erd tree things that start to sprout and they sprout the... The, like... The golden seeds and... Yeah. But, like, I'm pretty sure it's still, like, it'd have to be... Like, they talk about the Earth Tree, like, getting sick and, like, sort of dying. Like, it's... Actually, hang on. If we look at, like, I don't know. Um... Elden Ring. Duskborn ending. Like, even in the Age of the Duskborn, like, the tree is still, like, the, there's the... I feel like the Earth Tree is probably, like, it's, like, a physical, like, massive fucking stone tree. But then what's happening is, like, the golden shimmer is produced from something else. And that's why, like, it has this, like, big fracture down the middle of it. Like, it's like that's the light of the Erd Tree, and if you just got rid of it, like, the light of the Erd Tree would disappear, but the tree itself would still remain standing. Like, it talks about the Erd Tree, like, being sick and, like, how it used to, like, produce all of this seeds and bounty and it doesn't anymore. And you'd think, like, if it was really seriously fucked up, you would get more than just it's not producing bounty like it used to. You would get, like, there are no more Erd leaves falling or something like that. Yeah. There's, like, yeah, there's a, like... the I think the Erd tree is, like, it's an interesting concept because, um, it's, like... Like, it's, it's, it's parasitic in the same way that, like, the Scarlet Ionia is parasitic. That it's, like, something that's just growing across the land, but because it's taken the form of a beautiful golden tree, it initially becomes, like, oh, this is the great wellspring of life, but it's just, like... Oh, okay. Um, the minor, um... I th what I think you're talking about is um, in the catacombs where there were the, the people buried inside the trees. Um, those would those definitely bled on the um, network test because I remember playing it. I don't know if they still do. And then you have questions of like if it's like partially not really there then like where does all the ash come from in the lane dell and in in the the um ash and lane dell because like the whole place ends up blanketed okay um okay this is the final question we'll do so it's like uh what do you think was the biggest reversal of the community's understanding before and after a dlc and um i don't I don't want to say, like, like, Ringed City changed a lot of things, but that wasn't really, like, a reversal of understanding. It was just, like, it added a bunch of stuff no one knew was there before. But, like, um, I think just, like, the addition, okay, the addition of, um, Maria and the Fishing Hamlet, just, like, codifying that those things happened in Old Hunters is, like, okay, good, the big hole in the plot's not there anymore. And also just outright naming Coz. Because, like, it's important to remember that, like, before the DLC came out, Mikolash was still saying Coz or some say Cosm. And that was the only reference to Cos in the entire game until um, November of that year, which was about seven months. So it's seven months of like, what does Cos mean? And just being able to go, okay, Cos was it like, you could sort of like, you could intuit what was going on, but to just have them say, okay, straight up, it was another great one called Cos, 
Nikolai's just trying to contact her. Okay, we can all breathe out and stop arguing now. That was that was good. Anyway, I have to. I should go now because it's almost four p.m. So thanks everyone for showing up. Just again, just gonna plug. Um, go to. Go to Kofi.com slash Mephistophea and you can see that uh, you can donate here. It's um, and that money will help the um, the wiki to continue being online because like it has been going. It's actually been going for longer than the game's been out for. And they've actually started this before the game came out. So um, yeah, just kick her. Like I don't think it's especially massively expensive to host or anything, but um, there's still quite a lot of files there, and just kicking her, like, five bucks really, really helps cover the cost. So, thank you so much. And, um, yeah, I'll thank you. Thank you, Derek, yeah. So, yeah, um, I'll see you all, uh, later on. And, um, I will probably stream again with Altair, and I might stream some other Bloodborne stuff, maybe tomorrow or the next day, depending on how things work out. So, uh...